two eight miles of well challenging tarmac right from the start of the lap down to the andretti hairpin at turn two then the right handers at three and four and from there you're starting to climb up through to six, which is a blind entrance, and to the signature corner, really, the corkscrew. Down through really Bend, tough one. Get that one wrong, and you're in the sand because it falls away on the outside at turn nine. Turn 10, little speed ball, off camber in, fire yourself through it and pop out like a cork from a bottle down towards the slowest corner on the circuit. Turn number 11, you might get an overtake done there if you're super late on the brakes. Now, just rinse and repeat that for two hours and 40 minutes, and there is America's tyre 250. That is the challenge for the teams and drivers today here on this circuit for the second to last round of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship season coming to a close in a couple of weeks' time at Road Atlanta for the 20th Petit Le Mans. Jeremy Shaw is alongside Owen Trinkler and me, John Hindorf, in the booth. Our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter is Shea Adam. And Shea, the, let's get down to you. The formalities just about coming to an end down there on Pit Road. They are. Jerome Bleakmullen is actually out in the middle with Tony Laporta right now, describing a lap of this track, doing a fabulous job. He's got a few laps around this place. Uh, two poles to his name and two wins, does Jerome. He's got his partner in crime back again this weekend in the form of Jerome Bleakmullen and all the drivers have been installed in their cars. Every door is still open because it has warmed up, but we are about to go racing. Shit, Adam will be our eyes and ears as our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter. We're up on the run from turn four to turn number five. IMSA Radio and IMSA TV brought together for those of you outside the USA. If you're in America at the moment, then it's FS1. And they are on the air now with uh, Calvin Fish and Greg Kramer up in the Fox Broadcast HQ in uh, the Carolinas. And they've got uh, Jamie Howe and Brian Till in the pit lane. Uh, here we go flag to flag for those of you outside of the USA and no interruptions on that and if you haven't found us yet just go to imza.tv or the pop-out player on the imza page of radiolamont.com it's all the same pictures and you get our trackside commentary as well our keys to the race we went through them in the michelin countdown to green but let's recap them again jeremy shaw patience when passing pick your battles and pick your spot wisely easy to get greedy here it's uh, pretty uh, low grip racetrack, so the cars will be sliding around a lot. You've got to time your passes and make them incisive, be bold, and be decisive. Don't be uh, wishy washy about making a pass. If you're going to go, if you're thinking about making a pass, either do or don't. Don't, don't get stuck don't in the get middle. Don't get stuck in the middle. Hello. Hello to everybody in here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Sega who are just joining our global broadcast on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Uh, we're going through our keys to the race here. Owen Trinkler from the CRG I do borrow Nissan team third yesterday in the four hour race. Execute. That's not just a driver's job, that's everybody's job here, and it's so important on a tight track like this. Super important here because you want track position, so your, your pit crew's got to be there either with you your engineers got to be there with you as a driver here you want your track position you want tires and uh, so you can have enough to run to the end there so tires are so important here two hours and 40 minutes here last year it's two hours so it's a little bit perspective for the strategy what's going to happen here I think they made it on one stop last year some of the winners here definitely two stops here coming today and curb your enthusiasm Jeremy these you've raced here relatively recently not as recently as yesterday when Owen was on the track these curbs look very flat and very inviting to me, but there's hidden dangers at the apex and at the exit curbs. Yeah, that's right. On the apex, this is a sort of a red sausage curb. You can see it pretty clean, plainly when you close up. When you're at speed approaching this course, you can see one right down, down there in turn one. That's probably the one you're going to least get near. But uh, several other corners on this racetrack, it's easy. If, you, if your car turns in a bit better than you'd hoped for or wanted it to, then you can easily get on that inside curb. And that's going to cause you all sorts of problems on the exit. And on the exit, you'll have a good view of it there. Sand right over those curbing. You'll be using that blue and white curbing uh, pretty much uh, as part of your racetrack here. But you overstep that mark, you're in the dirt, the gravel, the sand, and it can cause you all sorts of difficulties. That's Jeremy Shaw and Owen Trinkler with me in the booth. The cars are rolling. And it'll be Ricky Taylor who leads the cars around to the green flag for the number 10, Konica Minolta Cadillac Racing Team. 
can say it. Uh, it is the number 10 black shiny car. OK, that's how it's going to be uh, referred to throughout the rest uh, of the race. Champions elect, they're nearly there. They're so close. They're almost within touching distance of the championship in prototype. In GTLM, it's the Risi competition Ferrari put on pole position in some style, one should say, as did Ricky Taylor at the front of the field for prototype. The bright red 62 car, Tony Villander in fine form for the Houston-based team ahead of the Fords, the BMWs, the Porsches and the Chevy Corvettes. In GTD, another pole position for the 48 team. That's the Paul Miller Lamborghini. Lamborghini showing off their Super Trofeo Evo here uh, this weekend. And uh, the big reveal going on a little bit earlier on today. Then it's a couple of Porsches and a BMW and a Lexus and Acuras and Ferraris. A huge variety of GT3 in that GT Daytona category. And frankly, pretty much half the fields could win that race. And I'm not sure that there's anybody who's not on for a podium right there. Things can happen at this track. Watch out particularly for the number 63 Ferrari. They haven't had a win this year. Christina Nielsen starts. That is standard practice for the Scuderia Corsa team. But they are leading the championship with just one round to go after this one. The Taylors can clinch the championship today. Everything else, though, is still open. Will it still be at the end of the two hours and 40 minutes? Gentlemen, are we ready to go, Jeremy? Yeah, we certainly are. I'm mean, expecting a tremendous battle in prototypes. It's super tight. Uh, there's uh, six cars covered by uh, about three and a half tenths of a second. Oh, wait a minute. That's all except for Ricky Taylor, because he was on pole by twice that margin. But uh, look, everybody is super close to the match. I don't think anybody's going to get anywhere near the Taylor brothers today, assuming they have consistency as well. But I think the battle for second and third and fourth and if there's any drums at all from number 10 car, it's going to be intense. Now, if you start in the race now, Owen Trinkler, let's say your mid pack somewhere, one of those GTLM cars, what are you looking for? Where's your head looking? Everywhere? Oh, everywhere. Well, the biggest thing coming down into turn two, it, something happens to the inside row. Saw a couple of cars spin there yesterday in the Continental race, so you've got to be very careful. If you're down the inside, you're in the right spot. But if you're on the outside row and a car spins, it's going to go up the hill there, up the banking a little bit and stop right in front of you. So you've got to be super important coming into turn two. You're carrying a lot of speed from turn one, which is the kink down the front straightaway. Do you get a, would you expect your team to be helping you out, watching the TV pictures and almost acting as a spotter for you with that first to run down the turn two? Well, most of the teams have spotters around the track. We had our spotter located down in, in the front straightaway. So eyes ahead of the car to make sure if something happened down there, we started on the inside row, so we didn't have any issues there, but it's very important there. Something could come up really quick down to turn two. And, and this is a hilly circuit. Any problems with pits to car communication or can you be heard and hear the pits all the way around? Because this is a place where you might have to make a snap decision to come into the pits if you're trying to beat a full course caution. If there's one area, it's just out of turn six. But most teams probably got the repeater and they should be fine here. OK, that's on Trink Trinkler before that. It was Jeremy Shaw. I'm John Heindorf. And the safety car lights are out. It has been the pace car. If we see it again, it will be the safety car. Split start with the prototypes coming through. And Ricky Taylor now has control of the field. Eight of the prototypes lined up. Two by two, green flag is waving, and the 2 hours and 40 minutes starts now here at the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship for America's Tire 250. They go down towards the first corner, very even indeed, and the front row is still absolutely side by side. The Ferrari still comes through in the lead of GT Le Mans, but goes very wide indeed, and there's a spin exactly as Owen Trickler was talking about. It's the 24 BMW, the black car of John Edwards. He was in third position, and now he's stuck to the Inside. He can't move until most of the GT, in fact, all of the GT Daytona field has gone through. At the front of the field, Taylor leads Filippaldi. The front row have split themselves up, battling further behind is Mark Goosen in third position. He's got Eric Curran in the red white number 31 all over him at the moment. A good start from Tony Villander for GTLM, and he just gets a tiny bit of an advantage. And a brilliant start by Michel Goitberg and that, that bright yellow JDC Miller Motorsports Orica. Here he is right behind Eric Curran, who started in the uh, fourth position, got both started in eighth. Brilliant start around the outside at turn one and two, made that nice and clean, tucked in behind, and uh, that is one of the cars that is pursuing that battle for second place in the championship. And the GT cars all coming through together, and actually, 
very quick indeed in their first lap. They tend to warm up their tyres a little differently to the prototypes, perhaps, but that gap that we had between the prototypes and the GT car seems to have closed down just a little bit. As they come through at the end of the first lap, it is Taylor for the Baldi Goosens, Cadillac, Cadillac, Leisure, Shea Adam down in the pit lane. Just as the cars came by the first time, John, I noticed there is severe damage to the left front of the 48 Lamborghini. The headlight is missing. Perhaps that was the car that had contact with the 24. Uh, ooh, right, well, he must have got a really good start. Uh, Madison Snow still leads the GT Daytona category. And the spinner, of course, went all the way down to the back, and John Edwards is still behind the GT Daytona field. That is not the start that they were looking for in that black BMW. Now, John Edwards Owen has got to settle himself down. He, he may have been pushed into that, that might not have been a mistake, but whatever, few deep breaths, regroup. You'd expect the race engineer to be on him saying, settle down, lads, we've still got 2 hours and 37 minutes to go. Yeah, long way to go, and they can play some strategy to get him back to the front. Uh, looks like uh, the replay just showed, maybe just got a little tap from the from a car behind him there, but what happens there is you release the brake, car gets really light in the rear, so it doesn't take much to get the car to spin there in turn two. So, yeah, particularly on the first lap when the uh, Michelin tires on that car aren't, aren't yet up to And they're heavy with fuel, and, and everything's exactly. working against you et cetera, at that et point. Et yes. yes and so on and so on. Ricky Taylor pulls out one and a half seconds as he goes across the line from Christian Fittipaldi. Cadillac number 10 from the lighter colored car in second, the number five car. And in third place, Mark Goosens, the first of the global cars, the Gibson powered Ligier, that mid blue colored number 90 racing for Florida car. But is the Conninger Minolka, the black, blue and white car which is stretching away and Ricky Taylor we know can turn on the style and the pace and he's doing it now Filippaldi holding him actually doing a pretty good job as the continental tires on those prototypes come up to pressure and temperature Mark Goosens has held on to third Curran and Goitberg still having a scrap Goitberg's just dropped back a little bit as Eric Curran closes in on Misha Goitberg and the left front of the 48 car does have quite a lot of damage. Looks like there's some damage to the rear as well. That might have taken a hit both ends of that car, but it's the uh, inspection cover at the front of the car. No engine underneath there, remember, but the left rear looks like it's got a bit of a damaged uh, diffuser on there as well. Certainly take a, a little bit of a crack underneath the, the number 48. Yeah. But it's a one-eyed monster at the moment for Madison Snow. Not slowing him down that much, Jeremy. He's, he gathered himself up and pulled away. It's probably giving him a bit more downfalls, actually, on the front of that car. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it, yeah the, the problem is when that uh, begins to, to, to fall apart, potentially, then it will be really bad news. Well, John, that latch on the left side is completely popped up, so it's got that one latch holding yeah. it down. So that's just a plastic piece there. So we'll see if that stays together. Uh, I think that probably happened. He was down the inside row on the inside when John Edwards got bumped there, just kind of little bumper cars going on there, and he probably got pushed from the back into somebody else there. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. New lap, new lap record, by the way, not just fastest lap. Oh. New lap record for Ricky Taylor on lap three. The old record let's set last year was a one minute 19.2. The new record, 118.699 on lap three. Not bad. Yeah, not sure how long that front end of the Lamborghini from Paul Miller Racing is going to hold on there. Uh, through to second place, or holding on to second place, Daniel Morad in the 28. Legra racing car, Serge Caron for Lexus in the 14, in the third, and Patrick Lindsay in fourth in the 73. That's the black or dark grey and dark red car. Then Osnegri Jr. in the 86. It's the uh, metallic bronze Acura. And making up the top six, another different manufacturer, BMW. The red and blue of Will Turner's Turner Motorsport. It was Will's birthday yesterday. Those cars coming down to complete their fourth lap at the moment. And John Edwards working his way carefully through traffic. Uh, he's made up the small matter of uh, nine places uh, since he was spun around. Yep, new lap record again, by the way, 118.345 for Ricky Taylor. A full second faster than the rest of the field. 
number 96, I'm hearing from Shea. That is Jens Klingman in sixth position for BMW uh, with some radio issues. Now, what we don't, what I don't know is whether he, uh, they are hearing him, he's not hearing them. Not the worst bit, way to be as a driver, that, in fairness. No, when you can't hear your crew, I mean, you got to kind of have that middle clock going on. You know, if you get a yellow here at some point that uh, they want you to come in, so just kind of follow everybody else at that point. At least he can tell them when they're coming, he's coming in if something goes awry. <laughs> yeah. 3.5 seconds, Ricky Taylor has pulled the pin, hit the afterburners, call it what you will, he is gone. He has put the hammer to the metal and bye-bye everyone else. Already three and a half seconds to the good, despite Christian Filippaldi setting his and the number five Cadillac's fastest lap last time around in a 1.19.0. Mark Goosens, 1.19.6. He's three seconds further back, so the top three now separated by six and a half seconds. And that is because Ricky Taylor is running for the hills. In GTLM, Tony Vlander did hold on at the start of that race. And he's got half a second now on Dirk Muller in the 66, Chip Ganassi racing Ford. Alexander Sims in the better place of the BMWs now, the 25. That's the white car. Volume up, I think, is what that says on the pit board that was being hung out for the 96 car. And we hear you on the other side. They've had to make that up with numbers, some tapes, some bits and pieces. It's been like a craft class there. Old school. That. that is old school. It's old pit board there. Yeah, very much so. Snow, Morad, Karam, or 48, 28, 14, your top three. You're listening to IMSA Radio Trackside. Let's hope we settle into some rhythm here after the excitement of that first start here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Sega around the world at IMSA Radio and IMSA TV and on Sirius 118 XM 205. Good to have your company from the IMSA Broadcast Centre here between turns four and five. Now we can see what everyone is able to do. We've got a nice clear circuit still for Ricky Taylor, but it won't be long before he's into the back of the field and has to deal with traffic. Flapping of the underbody on Corvette number four, Ollie Gavin's car. Clearly able to be seen as he comes out of the final corner, turn number 11, and heads down to the start-finish line and beyond it. Big crowd here, a lot of cars parked in the hillsides, looking very dry here at Mazda Raceway, Laguna Sega. Green in the far distance over onto the ranges of Fort Ord, which is uh, the land that we back right onto here. Fantastic facility, as ever, the circuit providing excitement aplenty in our support race category over the weekend. And Ricky Taylor is coming to the end of his clear run because now from the front of that number 10 Cadillac, he can see the back of the field. And it'll be Kenny Abul in the number 75 AMG GT, who is the first man to go a lap down. The Lone Star Racing 80 car is the next car ahead of that. 24 of John Edwards looking very focused and very annoyed indeed would suggest to me that he got a little bit of a tap Ollie Gavin a little more laid back 911 started by Patrick Peele playing golf earlier on this week decent very decent golf for Patrick Peele very decent amateur golf got a lovely swing tiny bit of head movement before he hits the ball I was noticing on the slow motion Early Can you beat him by how much? Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I'm, it would be easy for me. Give me a seven or an eight iron and a putter, or, yeah, and that fella. would be the only two clubs I would ever need. I can throw the ball further than I can hit it with a straight face club. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, two hours and 30 minutes still to go. Let's have some opening thoughts uh, from Jeremy Shaw. And first, here's Owen Trinkler. Owen, how do you think this is setting out? Ricky Taylor's done his job at the start of the race. Well, is he doing it? And one thing to note for our listeners that he's doing it on tires that he qualified on, setting these times, and he's almost a second faster than the second place car. I mean, he's just stretching it out and he's gone. And uh, that's just unbelievable. And the Lambo and the, the 48 Paul Miller, they're still out there pounding around, even with that damage they got, and they've pulled a good lead, too. And uh, Jeremy Shaw and GTLM. Tony Vlander managed to stay away from the madness in the first couple of corners and now just begins to start easing away from the Ford of Dirk Muller 
in second position. This car's looked good all week, and so has Tony and Giancarlo Fisichella. Yeah, certainly has. Now, now, now we come down to the difficult bit. Uh, he, he's been lapping super consistently in the 18s. Fastest race up of 18.34 for our race leader. Last lap around now, now in traffic, 21-1 for Ricky Taylor. We, we know how good he is, though, in traffic. Uh, he's got a lead now of 3.8 seconds. He came down by one second on that, lap, on that lap, but that's primarily because he caught the traffic curve before the second place car, Philippe Aldi, did. But, you know, we get to the stage now, as Owen was saying, they all, uh, all the cars start on the, on the cars with which, on the tires with which they qualified. It's much hotter this afternoon than it has been the rest of the weekend. We talked about it already. Target degradation here is critical, and uh, with it being much hotter as well, that's going to make time up time where more difficult and the car's going to be sliding more as you work your way through the traffic now from this point onwards we're going to see who has the pace who can make any moves in the traffic move forward interesting the number 52 car qualified really well for jose gutierrez up in the uh, fifth position but he's stuck now behind all those other prototype cars brilliant effort by michel goikberg to get himself up to fifth place and those two nissans we heard from the taylor brothers before the start of the race they or, and, and or their dad this morning joining a warm-up their primary opposition they reckon will be the nissans well they're down in sixth and seventh positions and they're already 15 seconds behind the leader yeah they haven't been able to get that turbocharged nissan gtr engine to give the performance that they want turbos quite sensitive to changes in temperature they like that air coming in a little bit cooler it's not super hot though here it should be said it's yeah okay it's, it's warmer today though isn't it it is I, I actually i had my jacket on earlier when we went down to marion's to to grab an early lunch and I, I probably didn't need it for the first time this week at that time of day and shears down to just two layers now the, and uh, well actually there's four layers because there's an under layer and then three layers of nomex uh, for sure they mandatory. the three layers of nomex are mandatory down in the pit lane 122 1 in traffic for Ricky Taylor and a 22 2 for Christian Fittipaldi. Yeah, so that's for three seconds and more from the times that Ricky was turning in clean air. But that, that's sensible. You, you don't expect to see people oh, doing the same times, and they've got a championship to think about here. Yes, if they win the race, that will be job done, but. They've got to get there. They've got to get to the end in two and a half hours' time. No, you got to be at the end, and you got to pick your points where you want to make the passes. It's tough, you know, down through turn nine and, and turn ten in that area. You don't want to surprise some of these GT cars and uh, make a move where they don't think you're going to, and then they turn down on you, and then you mess up your race here. It's easy. If you get caught up in something early on, you'll go down several laps, and, and be in two hours and 40 minutes, it's going to be tough to get those laps back here. Yes, and... Well, I mean, we saw... Yesterday, Pierre Kleinubing come from two laps down. Sorry to bring that up, Owen. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he didn't come back from two laps down pure, on pure pace. No, but he yeah. came back on the on the yellow flag uh, on full course caution cycles. Yeah, with the wave arounds. Yeah, with the wave arounds, and with the way this track is, it's so hard to get back on from the dirt, from the sand. If you go off, it's almost. Um, a surety that someone goes and more than a couple of cars with off the circuit that you're going to need help to get that car back out. No, the sand traps are just right off the edge there. Um, you got a little bit of sand and then you go right into a gravel trap in most of these high speed turns. But what happens, you know, what we saw in the Continental race yesterday, cautions breed cautions. Yeah. And uh, we went for a long period of time in that four hour race with no caution. Uh, that middle stint there, no issues. And then the last 50 minutes, I think we had three to four cautions. Yeah. So uh, that's one thing to watch for and see how the, the race is kind of getting in a rhythm now. Everybody's kind of starting to get spread out. and. Uh, you know, I think we're going to go for a long green run here. That's the voice of Owen Trinkler. Jeremy Shaw is alongside him. And myself, I'm John Hindoff, Shea Adam, our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter. Let's pick up some battles for you through the fields. Coming up to the corkscrew now, the 96 of Jens Klingmann with radio problems. Not uh, affecting his pace, though. He's got Oz Negri in his sights in that very distinctive for this weekend, metallic bronze Acura, and a story behind the uh, aero paint finish on the, that 
particular car, Jeremy, particularly as to the, the shade of it. It's uh, not unknown to Michael Shank Racing, that, is it? No, indeed not. It's a kind of a reprisal of the colour scheme on, that was on the prototype car last season. Well, that went fairly well, didn't it? Because it won the race right here with the Aussie Negri and John Pugh on that occasion. So an overall win that was. They're now looking for a GTD win. And you know that, that number 86 team, they've been struggling. Well, not been struggling necessarily, but they've had all sorts of problems. Anything uh, for a while could go wrong did for that team. But both Aussie Negri and Jeff Siegel have been fast all weekend long. Uh, they were pretty quick in the warm-up as well. The sister car number 93 was fastest in the warm-up this morning. They're feeling good about their prospects for this race. 15 just coming through the final corner. That is Scott Pruitt. The Lexus this weekend, the number 15 car, seventh position. As he climbs the hill and all kinds of traffic to work through for the prototypes. Misha Goikberg still in fifth position after that blistering start. The bright yellow JDC Miller Motorsports car going past Jens Klingman and problems for Madison Snow. As that yeah, uh, exactly. front cover exactly is now, what we of it right now. Yeah, it's come up one side as if it's on a, almost as if it's on a strut. He's going to yeah. have to pit. He comes through turn uh, he's number not ten. Not see anything at this no, stage. No, he's uh, it's right in front of him. He's got to be looking out the side at the moment. He's in the pit lane. It's I think it's just the catch that's popped. But what are the damages being done, Shea Adam? Well, the damage is such that the hood is actually bent up now, so that Madison, from his perspective, would just barely be over to see. The seating position in the Lamborghini is such that Madison sits up fairly high. They pulled the old hood off, which is crumpled. Put a new one on. They're not replacing the left front headlight, though. And they're just having trouble wedging it into place, making sure it stays. The important thing is they are refueling the car while all this work is going on. No new tires, but this should make the car be able to go a little bit further into its stint. They put a bit of tape. Uh, now they're getting out new Continentals. They are going to change the right size at the very least. While they secure the tape on the nose, fueling is done. The tire change is nearly done. They're going to do four tires, fuel, and the damage repair. This will set them down a lap, though, me thinks, gentlemen. Yeah, good, good strategy, though, to make the best of a bad thing and well done for not trying to fix the original panel they just pulled it off and i think madison ran into the back of ollie gavin and that's where the damage to ollie gavin's car came yeah i'm sure of it now that i've seen that again he certainly was in that sort of area the red white and black machine is rolling again very bad luck for the youngster but that owen is the absolute perfect example of what can happen you have a long front straight into a heavy braking area. It's that concertina effect. Sometimes you see it on the freeway. It can happen on a racetrack too. It does, yeah. It's just kind of get down there and, like we said, bump up like bumper cars down to turn two there. The one good thing is they finally decided to put tires on them. Get tires on them here. Maybe he can gain some track position back. So uh, as these other guys cycle through their pit stops, he needs it to stay green right now. Doesn't need a yellow right now. Needs it to stay green and let it cycle through the pit stops and maybe they'll put him back in the front of the field. And the point you made earlier on, very important here, Jeremy, is that everyone else has started on the tyres they qualified on. So they've had 10 laps plus the 14 they've done on. Madison Snow now on brand new Continental, so should find some pace. That car was very good on new tyres earlier in the week. Yeah, it was. Uh, and yeah, it'll be very interesting to see. I mean, they worked pretty much all the way through the practice sessions here, which were three one-hour sessions. Uh, the team pretty much concentrated exclusively on getting ready for the race. Long runs, see how, how long the tyres would go, and then on the Saturday morning, they put a couple of sets of tyres on, one each for Ryan Sellers and one each and one for Madison Snow prior to Madison Snow, Snow qualifying the car, also on a fresh set of Continental tyres. So they've been through the whole gamut there. They know how that car works on fresh tyres, and it works very, very well because he put it on the pole. So as Owen was absolutely saying, this gives them an opportunity now to make up some of that lost ground. Shea Adam, it's not unlimited in terms of tyre allocation for the classes? No, for the two pro classes we have here this weekend, Prototype and GTLM, they are allowed 10 sets of new tyres. For GTD, however, the non-pro category, they were only given eight. So that is one down for the Lamborghini on top of all the ones that they've already used through practice ones, two, three, and qualifying. Thank you very much, Shea. Shea Adam with the Continental Tire Pit Lane report there. Two hours and 19 minutes to go. IMSA TV and radio together. We're live from trackside every minute of the season. 
we have covered for you from the side of some fantastic circuits as we've made this 2017 tour of the United States. And still to come, of course, in a couple of weeks' time, the season finale at Petit Le Mans. But today, it's Master Race Wheel Laguna Seca, another historic circuit that we're visiting again. And this is, it's pretty much your star player, isn't it? It doesn't matter what your sport is, whether it's baseball, American football, or soccer, or even cricket, there's always one whose name goes on the team sheet straight away. And that, in terms of this form of motor racing, since the start of the American Le Mans series with IMSA and through into this new era of IMSA and the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, that has been Laguna Seca. Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca has been on every calendar and we've raced here every year since this series was formed. And it's great to be back here. And Jill and the rest of the team, Jill Campbell, and the rest of her hard-working team. And we should mention the volunteers from Scrap as well. Of course, a unique situation here uh, at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. And we thank you all for your hard work, not just today, but throughout the year, and for making us welcome at this great circuit. The leader working through traffic now and coming through past the fourth and fifth place Porsches in GTLM. That's half the field and more now that he's gone through in the space of 16 laps and lapping still through traffic consistently at least half a second and more, Owen Trinkler, better than any of the other cars, including the other Cadillacs. So yes, he's eased his pace, but through traffic, he's still quicker than everyone else. That takes some doing. No, it does. I mean, we're just watching him here. He's picking his points where he needs to make the passes, being smart about it. Uh, the biggest thing that's going to happen with all the cars here, they're going to start to go on the loose side here. Power down is going to be an issue as we get later in this run. It just seems like these guys have got it figured out. Coming off turn 11, his car is putting the power down and driving off that corner. And uh, talking about Madison Snow, uh, just to switch gears to Madison Snow, he's, he hasn't fallen off the lead oh. lap in GT Daytona, point number one. Point number two, he's now circulating at least a second a lap quicker than everybody else in the class. His last lap was 126.9. The leader, Daniel Morad, a 128.0. Yeah, he is 33rd and last car running. Yeah, uh, but don't panic. No, exactly. Yeah. It is Hitchhiker's Guide to uh, the uh, uh, Galaxy time. Don't panic, he's about 10, 11 seconds ahead of Daniel Mora on the track, but that gap in Madison's terms is growing. He's getting away from the leader, so getting back, closing down the uh, minute and change that he, he is behind the leader. And shortly, of course, he'll start having to make some overtakes, but he's got the benefit, Owen, of that fresher continental tire rubber. No, he does, and so he'll end up driving away. I mean, he drove away from the second place car there at the beginning, even with the issue he was having on the front end, and now he's got new Continental tires, and you'll see him stretch that gap. I, that's why I think, Jeremy, strategy-wise, I don't think this is going to hurt them too much. This may play right into their hands, and they'll cycle back to the front here shortly if we can stay green for a little bit. Number three, Chevy Corvette, Jan Magnussen going through, Ollie Gavin behind him still with that bodywork or under tray or something flapping underneath the rear end of the car. Yeah, that's getting worse. I can see that now from the side of the car on the right-hand side as well as the back. Just a little instability, an aerodynamic instability. You know, sometimes you see it when you're driving behind someone on a freeway or a motorway, that the, uh, the engine cover underneath many cars nowadays or something underneath the car, one of the little fastenings pops off, the air gets around it and you see that undulation underneath the car looks a weird thing that that's happening well that's happening at the back of ollie gavin's car at the moment and it must just be the very forward yeah there it is again as he goes up the hill towards turn six it's the right hand side of the diffuser has got a vibration now ollie will be feeling that in the car now no doubt at all that is going to be uncomfortable for the tall englishman and the worrying thing about that, of course, the team have got to tell him, Owen, what it is, because otherwise he thinks it's a puncture, he's got pickup, or there's something worse going on. Yeah, the biggest thing is probably thought it was a pickup here, because it's going to build up here later on as we get all the marbles up to the outside of the, the racing line here. But they've seen it on our coverage here to see the vibration that he's having there. That's probably disturbing some air, and he's probably losing some downforce air in the rear, because it's not flowing out of there smooth underneath the rear of the car. Yeah, just hopes that that doesn't get any worse and break anything behind there. The Corvette's America Sports car built tough. Bowling Green, Ken took his finest and taken 
up to Detroit and to the Pratt & Miller workshop to be turned into these fearsome race cars that have been such a feature of this racing uh, since 2000. Which I was lucky enough to visit a couple of weeks ago, actually. Oh, I'm very yeah, envious. Yeah, exactly. It was fantastic. Uh, thanks to the guys there at, uh, at Pratt & Miller, Brandon Widmer showed uh, me around and, uh, and this year's two Musée scholarship candidates as well. So fascinating insight there into, into the world of Pratt & Miller and Corvette racing. And of course, they, they do a lot of other uh, work there as well, most of which we weren't allowed even to think about, let alone talk about. There's a lot of people in black suits stand around there with dark glasses on <laughs> on certain <laughs> days right. of the week when they're doing things behind closed doors. Did they 3D print you uh, anything like, you know, a, a, a nice new uh, three litre? Oh, spin at the top of the uh, corkscrew Dan, Dan for Knox. the number 80. Dan Knox in the uh, AMG GT for Lone Star Racing. No harm, no foul. A few people had their eyes open as he came through. They do a lot of 3D printing there, and they've been at the very forefront of that for, for quite some time. And for prototyping parts, that's extraordinary. I'm surprised it didn't come a bit away with bits for your Healy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I need one of these. I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to stay long enough. <laughs> but I was asked whether I was a, a US citizen, which of course I'm not, but I, because I'm a, a resident... You're a resident alien, resident, aren't you? Pres permanent resident. Mm. Uh, I was, I was, uh, I was cl had clearance. Over. No knocks off again at the outside of turn 11. Um, the car was already dusty. Yeah, that's all right as he goes through. Now, does that mean there's this little problem under braking for the number 80? A big shock for Jan Magnussen, who came up to the corkscrew and had to go around and take to some of that new tarmac and over the grate there, which is normally not where you want to be. Oh, Kenny, a bull must have been very close indeed as well. And Madison Snow would have been around that area as well. So Yeah, because Dan was right ahead of, uh, of Kenny Abul. You're right, they'd been a, a pretty good scrap. They'd been pretty much tied together since the beginning of the race, the number 80 and 75 cars. Report from the Tequila Patron ASM team. Uh, Johannes van Overbeck and Scott Sharp reporting, struggling with grip in the warmer temperatures. Exactly what we were talking about, Owen, and that's not going to get any better for them. What can the team do to assure them that they can give them something better at the first stops? Well, one thing, it can probably play with some air pressure in the tires and the Continental tires coming up, or maybe they can, I don't know how quickly they can put some downforce into the car uh, during their pit stop, or if they take some extra time, especially if we have a caution, maybe can put some front downforce and some rear downforce there, but it's not going to get any better, John. As this place heats up, it's going to get slick. You're going to have to work the car, understeer to oversteer, especially putting the power down in the prototypes and, and the GT cars. Uh, th there's not as much as you can do to balance these cars as you would be able to do with a, an Indy car. You don't have a weight jack air. There's not that much that you can do with the bars from inside the car. Play with the brick uh, bias a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit to help it sort of rotate on the way in if you need that. Uh, but the biggest thing is just, you know, you want tires here and you just kind of have to play your strategy differently. If they just don't have the grip, maybe some air pressure and some different things, they probably got the sway bars they can change a little bit uh, to soften the front, maybe harden the rear to get a little bit of rotation on the way in. But the problem is it makes it loose on the way off. Yeah. And so you've really got to put your power down here, but you got to get the car to turn in good. Yeah, there's a couple of places here where you want to be good center off the corner and get the push up the hill, let's say from turns five and six and certainly coming off the, the final corner, you want to be hooked up there. That's why over the years, Porsches have done well here because they've got that weird transfer going backwards. They do. They've got it on the rear tires, the left and rear tires here, and they can really put the power down coming off the turns here. Yeah, interesting. And uh, also, just as we're watching the GT Daytona leader, kind of a 28, that is Daniel Morad. He's got about a couple of seconds or so over Sage Karam, who's running beautifully in second place for Lectus. Great to see that team uh, have uh, a good run again. They've had a lot of good runs and just haven't translated them into results. Yeah. Perhaps today is the day for that team. But a really great effort by Daniel Morad and Patrick Long in that car later on. Meanwhile, Madison Snow, his last lap around was 126.3. Wow. Uh, and uh, the race leader, Daniel Morad, a 120. 28.2. All of the other cars are doing 28s or even 29s. And Madison Snow, 26.3, still quite a long way from catching up to anybody because of that pit stop. But, uh, you know, he's certainly turning some very, very good lap times. Uh, there'll be a drive through for Kenny Abul, uh, who helped the Lone Star Racing car into the spin we saw earlier on. So the Sun Energy One Mercedes, the Joseph's coat of many colours. Uh, livery on that car will be coming into pit lane shortly so that will be someone that madison snow does not have to pass it's just a drive through not a stop and hold 
but that was avoidable contact. Those two, as Jeremy said earlier, were having a crack battle towards the back of the field, but all battling is good battling when you're in a race car, particularly when it's for position. And position at the moment in GTLM being disputed with uh, Fords and BMWs, Porsches, all in the frame at the same time, coming through the final corner. And here's where the Porsche might get that legendary Porsche push from the final corner. The engine might be a little further up towards the back of the driver's seat, but they're still very good with that weight transfer. And this is the battle for third, fourth and fifth, second, third, fourth and fifth, with the 66 Ford, the 25 BMW, then the 911 and 912 Porsches, all line astern and more traffic to come. Oh, this is tremendous stuff. Pele two Michelins on the dirt between two and three, and that's allowed his teammate to come alongside as well. Oh, we're gonna have three wide almost going into turn number four. Pele goes down the inside and following him through. Lawrence Van Tour, first time at this track, needs no second in, in Invitation as they go one, two, three wide into turn five because we've got a prototype coming through. And that is Misha Goitberg in the JDC Miller Motorsport, the number 85, the yellow car. The two Porsches have gone through and uh, BMW not having this race their own way. As uh, John Edwards, by the way, has fought his way back from dead last and is now ahead of Ollie Gavin on the track, side by side into the top of the corkscrew. And the Porsches now have found a lease of life in the middle of this first stint on used tyres, Jeremy, that we haven't seen this kind of pace. Battling for second position, as through comes Ryan Briscoe, and he's made uh, short work of Lawrence Van Tuer, so he's now up into fifth. So a lot of cars who perhaps just been saving themselves, I wonder, yeah. in the early part of this uh, this first stint. No, and, and you know, in preparation, getting ready for the race. It's the race that pays the points. Um, I'm I'm not surprised. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of the Porsches uh, running strong, stronger sooner. Particularly at VIR, they really struggled there. But I think uh, you know they've they've. Uh, They've got to grips with the car today. Clearly, it's working well in these warmer conditions. It must be looking after its tyres well, and that has enabled it now to be, look a lot more competitive. Having said that, of course, uh, Tony Wielander is, is well clear out in front, 11 seconds <laughs> to the lead, but everybody else, there's not much to choose between them at all. Oh, my goodness. This is Bathurst all over again. Fortunate enough to be part of the Channel 7 and... Uh, RSL team down at uh, Bathurst for the Liquid Molly 12 hours earlier on this year. And Vlander won the Alan Simonson Paul Award trophy in the GT3 version of the 488 and then put on an absolute masterclass in a car that he barely sat in. Admitted to us afterwards, didn't like to say anything because he was fairly certain the team that had hired him thought he'd done all of the development work for the GT3. And he'd never sat in it before he went to Australia, got on with it really well, and he was taking a second 1.2. 0.75 of a second off a, out of a fantastically talented field. And he's doing the same again. Over 11 seconds now to the good ahead of Dirk Muller in second for the 66 Ford. Patrick Peele is another 1.4 seconds further back. And here is the battle with the Ford coming through on Patrick Peele. That is Ryan Briscoe. In fact, I tell a lie, that's Peele going for second. We've got another Ford coming up, having just passed the Porsche. And that was a Stevenson pit stop. And the 80 car is off again. And that is going up the hill at turn six. He's off to the inside. Driver's left. He's going to have to reverse gingerly. Now, it is quite hard standing on that side. There's not quite as much dirt there. So he should be able to get it pointing in the right direction. Now, last time he got a bit of a helping hand. Has he done that again? No, it looks like it's on. he's on his own. Turned in all right. Just... Got on the power a little bit early. Yeah, got on the power a little early and probably pinched it off. Didn't open his hands up a little bit with the steering wheel to use that extra pavement out there. Uh, Shea Adam, just before that incident, I was going to come down to you for the Stevenson pit stop. Their penultimate race in the series, of course, after the news that John Stevenson is uh, stepping away for a wee while. What happened with the Audi? Fuel and four new tires for Andrew Davis. His driving job is not yet done. Minimum time has not been met. Lawson Oshbach has to wait a little bit longer. Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, still has got about 10 minutes before the drive time is up. Uh, and as well as number 57 car coming onto pit lane, also on that same lap, did car number 16, the race winner last time out, change racing. 
that car drawn will rejoin directly ahead of Madison Snow, uh, who had made that pit stop earlier on after the uh, damage to the number 48 car. Well, as we come round to about uh, 35 minutes of racing, 36 minutes of racing, it's still Ricky Taylor, and he's still got a healthy lead, 13.3 seconds. Yeah, which is really blown out of the last three or four laps. So on lap 22, the gap was around about nine seconds, which is what it had been for the previous four or five laps. And now all of a sudden, in the last four laps, it's ballooned out to over, over 13 seconds. So uh, Ricky Taylor really doing a fine job in getting through the traffic here. Christian Fittipaldi in second for the number five Cadillac. Third, Mark Goosens, four seconds further back in third for the number 90, the Blue Visit Florida car. Then Eric Curran in the red and white Cadillac, the number 31, Misha Goikberg, the yellow Orica. But the gaps are starting to just widen out a little bit in GTLM. Tony Vlander, 13 seconds away from what is a cracking battle for second. 911 Porsche, Patrick Peele just coming down through Rainy Curve behind him. Dirk Muller, red, white, and blue. Ford behind him. Alex Sims in the white, the number 25 BMW behind him. Ryan Briscoe in the 67, the second of the Fords. And then Lauren Van Tour, who looked pretty good a few moments ago, but has dropped a couple of positions, the 912 car. Then there's a bit of a gap to Jan Magnussen. And then John Edwards has closed right up on the second. Chevy Corvette, not Chevy's day so far, but we've said that so many times this year. And Jan Magnussen and Antonio Garcia have somehow found their way onto the podium or better. Yes, they had a little bit of luck to help them at times, but there's been all kinds of weird and wonderful things. Now, one of which robbed Ollie Gavin of a, a victory, of course, at Long Beach when it looked nailed on. In comes the second place car. This is the number five Cadillac. We are 38 minutes, or if you prefer, 28 laps in. Shea Adam, what's going on down at the number five pit? Joao Barbosa is up on the wall. Of course, these guys do not have a minimum drive time that they have to worry about any longer. 10 minutes for the pro classes. That has more than been met. Christian Fittipaldi is out. They have changed the right side Continentals, running around to do the left side. This does not look like scrub rubber. The uh, tires are quite shiny. They've got that new sheen to them. So it will be fuel and four tires for the five cars. They were planning to come in early anyway because the car ahead of them is the four in the pit box and the car behind the 31. They wanted to get off strategy, have no traffic in any case. Five does a flawless pit stop and back out. Shit, Adam with that Connell Tire pit lane report as we head towards the two hour to go mark. That's uh, 39 minutes completed of the two hours and 40 in GT Daytona. Daniel Morad leads for the 28 Allegra Motorsport team. He's got five and a half seconds on Sage Carab in the electric blue Lexus, the number 14 car. Patrick Lindsay is right on his tailpipes in the dark grey and dark red, number 73 Porsche. Then there's a little bit of a gap, six, seven seconds to the very noticeable Acura. That's the 86 bronze metallic car who is having a scrap with Jens Klingman. That's Oz Negri driving that bronze car. Jens Klingman in the blue and white BMW is next up in the top six in GT Daytona, made up by the second of the Lexus. That is the 15 of Scott Pruitt. Christina Nielsen, our championship leader, started ninth, still ninth. And as far as the 48 car, Madison Snow has worked his way back up to 13th position in class. Yes, and having made the pit stop and come out just ahead of him, Jerome Moore in the other Lamborghini is now edging away, taking advantage of the fresh tyres that he has on that car number 16. And he's under a minute behind the leader in class now, and having been about a minute and uh, 13, 14 seconds. And he's just set the fastest lap in the class. Again. No, uh, the Jerome uh, Moore has. Ah, right, sorry. 26.061 on that last lap. That's the fastest lap of GT Daytona so far. Right, that's Jerome Mull in 12th position in the 16 car in 29th position. Uh, coming into the pit lane, first of our GT Le Mans uh, uh, team cars, and that is the number four Chevy Corvette of Ollie Gavin. Damage to the rear diffuser, I'm sure they'll be looking at that shit, Adam. 
they are planning to change all four tires. Uh, interestingly enough, as uh, Ollie rolls to a stop and they put the car up on the air jacks, I can see nothing hanging down, nothing out of place on that number four car. It was very evident when he would come by at full speed on the uh, outside of the pit lane, but not when he was on the pit lane speed limiter. So clearly a wind affected uh, piece. The tires have been changed. They gave him different Michelins than they were planning on initially. When they noticed the damage, they went to set 4.18 instead of 4.4, .4, which is what they had been planning on. Don't know what those numbers mean. 31 Wheel and Engineering, Cadillac has come in. They've already changed the right side tires. Dane Cameron has been installed behind the wheel of that car as well. A little bit of spinning. You might be able to see on the camera if you're watching the stream. That was not because the gas pedal was touched. It was just the wheel gun effect. I've seen that a couple of times so far today on a variety of cars, but Dane stalls. Wow, that was a rare moment. Uh, the 31 goes to get back out. They briefly stalled the car, managed to get it refired. We also have the Ted crew up on the wall, so Ricky Taylor will be coming in very soon as a plethora GT, of yeah, GT cars coming come in. in. Second, third, and fourth coming in together with you now, Cher. I've got the Porsche already stopped in its box as there is a driver change for that 912 machine, so Jimmy Bruni's turn to pilot that beast. The 24 BMW is in. Martin Tomczyk getting installed behind the wheel of that. The 66 and 67 Fords both in. I believe I just saw Ryan Briscoe's helmet going back over the pit wall as there was a driver change for both Fords. Four tires for every single GTLM car. For the 10, the leader that came in with a great margin, they are doing four tires as well. Jordan Taylor installed behind the wheel. Fuel for everybody. The first GTLM car back out is the 66, followed by the 24. No, sorry, the 912 narrowly ahead of the 24. 24 is the inside line, and then the 67 right behind. This is awkward. They are, they are very close to each other. 24 finally gives way, and the 10 leaves its pit box as well. And there was an overtake after the uh, pit lane limit line, but still in the pit lane by the Ford going round the outside. Now, he had to go into the hash marks there to make that dumb. That's part of the racetrack. I think that's okay. You get off the pit lane speed limit, and you should be allowed to race. It was very, very tight indeed. Uh, Mark Goosens has stayed out, by the way, and therefore leads the race. Contact between Patrick Lindsay in the 73 and Sage Karam in the 14 a few moments ago, and that's caused damage to both cars. That was coming through turn three, as both cars were on rather weird lines coming through turn three, neither of them on the optimum racing line there. Yeah, it looked like Patrick was trying to sit him up for the over-under move coming up to turn four there, and uh, I don't know if Sage moved right on him. It's the angle we have here is just not, not that good, but I think that's what he was trying to do there, Patrick was. Let's go back down to share. The number 25 BMW has come in with a four on the side of its car from the on-track position. Alexander Sims jumps out, Bill Oberlin jumps in. The number 85 JDC Miller Motorsports banana boat prototype also came in, made a stop. It was Misha Goikberg who brought it in. He left as well. Four new tires and fuel as well as a windshield claim for him. The number 90 Visit Florida car has come in. Renger Van Zand is very, very bright yellow helmet has got behind the wheel of the Ligier. They pitted from the lead. This is a team that needs a win so badly. Their, store, their shelter was damaged during Hurricane Irma. Their shop seeing many feet of water in it, but this is a team that did not complain about that. Ranger and Mark want to give these guys a big victory here at Mazda Race Pit Laguna Seca, a track where Visit Florida has won many times before. We also have one of the Tequila Patron ESM machines in. That is the number 22. Johannes Van Overbeck brought it in. He is staying behind the wheel. When the two comes in, they will do a driver change. Scott Sharp will get out, and it will be Razzle Dazzle's turn to shine. The number 911 Porsche in GTLM has come in. Patrick Pile brought it in. Dirk Werner's turn is coming up next. He was on pole here a couple years ago. Very quick around this circuit. We also have the 52 in the Ligier for PR1 Matheson Motorsports. Olivier Pla has already installed himself behind the wheel. He is very, very familiar with the positioning of a Ligier. Not so much with this circuit. This is his first weekend racing here. Everyone is just waiting on fuel at this point as fuel still going on for the 22. Now the door shuts. It was a bit of a longer stop. They had the cable plugged in. The 911 has gone back out. 22 is cleared back out on the pit lane and I'm seeing a lot of GTD teams get up on the wall, including the 19 they are trying to flag in Jens Klingmann, not by holding out a board over the pit wall, but by hoping that he looks over and notices that all his team is standing on the wall. Okay, that's uh, take a breath now, Shea, will you? I have no idea how you uh, did all of that. And I, 
A stream of consciousness, yes, absolutely. And thank you for the notes on the uh, on the numbers on the tyres. We don't know what it means yet, but never mind about that. We'll find we'll find out. The 911 uh, Dirk Werner now in that car had closed down Tony V Lander to just under nine seconds. As Tony V Lander will come in this time around, the Ferrari has the smallest. A fuel tank, but it is very good on fuel. It also takes a long time to fill because the whole idea is you balance out how much, not not how much fuel goes in, but how much time it takes to give a full tank of fuel. In also the number two, Scott Sharp behind the wheel of that Nismo powered prototype, the Leisure car, almost a continental wheel and tyre getting away from the team, but it was neatly fielded by the front tyre changer. Leader in GT LM is in, mm. and that looks like a driver change there as well, Shay. It will be a driver change, Antonio Garcia, the quiet man from Spain, getting installed behind the wheel of the bright yellow championship leader GTLM car, and the 63, the GTD championship leader Ferrari is also in. Christina Nielsen out, Alessandro Bazan gets in behind the wheel, and uh, Giancarlo Fisichella takes over the 62 Ferrari, so we have a lot of Italians starting to drive now. 73 has been in, hard place Porsche, Patrick Lindsay gets out, and Jörg Bergmeister in. The 96 finally did manage to wave their driver in, Jan Klingmann has gotten out of the car. They put Jesse Krohn in, hoping it's just something with Jens's helmet plug as to why they couldn't actually communicate with them. The 33 uh, Team AMG, Riley Motorsports, uh, AMG GT3 R. Uh, Mercedes has come in and Ben Keating out, your own Black Mullen in, as well as the 54 Core Autosport Porsche, which I will tell you if it is being driven by Colin Brown in a manner of seconds because he's approaching me at a rapid pace. Yes, it is. It is Colin Brown as he nearly gets nailed in the side by the 33 coming out of his pit box. Well, that's interesting. We've got John Bennett on in that uh, car. Yeah, uh, we're going to switch over. Yeah, I mean, the 45 minutes have been completed now. Yeah. So the AM drivers are done. Get the, get the pros in there. That's uh, certainly the case for the 54 car particularly. Uh, and the... Uh, and the... And the... What's the other 63. 63. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and uh, that means those guys will go to the end. Uh, right. we They'll have one more stop uh, think, before the end of the race. I think we found out where the 62 car lost a bit of uh, speed before Tony Lander, uh, Vaylander came in, uh, the 31. And I'm not sure whether that was Dan Cameron on his outlap or Eric Kerr, Kerr in the lap before they came in. I think that was Dan Cameron on his outlap or the lap afterwards, coming down the inside into Rainey out of the corkscrew with two Continental tyres on the prototype in the dirt there. That was nearly... A very nasty accident. Fortunately, the 62 car of Tony Vlander, he was trying to go past. Actually, there's two class leaders there because the 28 car, which is the other car involved, is leading GT Daytona, Daniel Morat. So that was nearly a, a very nasty incident for two class leaders and the third place car overall. Uh, let's uh, give you a rundown of what's happening. We've got an hour and 51 minutes to go. And with GT Daytona pit stops starting, Robert Lunch is coming in the 14. Let me run down that class before their pit. Daniel Morad in the 28 Allegra Porsche leads by 15 seconds. Os Negri Jr. up the second as some pit stops have started here, but none of these top cars have yet taken their first pit stop. In third, Cooper McNeil in the 50. WeatherTech Porsche is another nine seconds further back. Catherine Legg in the Acura up to fourth position. And then Jeroen Mull in fifth position in the Lamborghini number 16, the first car that's made a pit stop, and behind him by just seven seconds, the second car that's made a pit stop is Madison Snow. So those guys are coming through the field in GTLM after a full set of pit stops. Tony Villander still leads, now by just three seconds. It was down to eight seconds before the pit stop. It's now just three seconds, and... It's Dirk Werner in second place in the 911 Porsche, ahead of Joy Hand in third in the Chip Ganassi 66 car. Bill Oberlin and the 25 car up to fourth position for BMW. And they're separated by nine seconds. Uh, Richard Westbrook in the 67 now. He'll not be stopping for fuel again. He's got his fluffy pink bunny slippers on and he'll just be cruising home from here like he did last year that was extraordinary uh, he's within 10 seconds as well of the leader and the top six is made up by Mark Tomchik Tomchik behind the wheel of the 24 car remember that was the car that uh, spun out early on uh, with the opening driver at the wheel uh, John Edwards and it's worked its way back to 24th position ahead of Jimmy Bru uh, to 6th uh, position rather in class ahead of Jimmy Bruni in seventh at the head of the field after the pit stops 
it's still the 10 Cadillac leading. And it's Jordan Taylor behind the wheel now. Ten and a half seconds to lead back to. Still the five Cadillac in second. Joao Barbosa. Dane Cameron, though, has made it a Cadillac 1, 2, 3 with the 31 car now up into third place. The top three separated by 18 seconds. Renga van der Zander is in the 90 car, which was in second place. Now in fourth, but he's only half a second back from Cameron. Yeah, it was in third, not, not, uh, sorry, not second. Sorry, yes. But sorry. Uh, interesting, before the round of pit stops, number 10 car held a 13 second lead over number five car in second place. Uh, when uh, when the when the cars came out after their stops, or after everybody had been done, it was only seven and a half. It's already back out over 10 between the number 10 car and number five of Barbosa. The uh, 31 car, great stop by that team, uh, but I think it must have been uh, more so uh, a relatively slow pit stop by the number 90 car because uh, the gap from second to third was only about four seconds before the pit stops. And now from second to third, it's seven seconds, but 31 car ahead of 90. However, number 90 car, Rega van der Zender, is closing in on Dane Cameron. Uh, and it is Giancarlo Fisichella behind the wheel of the 62. My apologies, that hasn't swapped over on our screen at the moment. Also news from race control, and thanks to Lee Driggers for passing this along the... Uh, contact that we saw at turn three between the Lexus number 14 and the 73 Porsche has been reviewed. No action taken by the stewards. Racing incident on that one. Right, John Taylor takes over where his brother left off and immediately settles into a nice rhythm. He's in traffic at the moment. The GTLM battle headed by Giancarlo Fisichella in the 62 car with a still a handy lead, three and a half seconds not uh, massive in these contexts. You can lose a couple of seconds around here. Or Trinkler very easy, easily indeed. If you get stuck behind traffic, a couple of seconds in a lap here is nothing at all. Oh yeah, if you get caught with prototypes coming by you and you get pushed out wide in the marbles, that's going to take half a lap to get some of the marbles off your tires. So uh, we've got the hometown boy, uh, Joey Hand Same. in the 66. See if he can close down the Ferrari during this stint here. I mean, it, it got wild. I think it's all going to come back together and the Porsches are going to be strong here at the end of this run. Uh, in comes the... Lamborghini number 48, that seems early to me. It will be a driver change, so they haven't been able to turn that early stop into a, an advantage. Uh, Madison may be feeling that he's just a little bit shit, Adam. The crucial thing that they did, John, they put more tape over where the headlight should be on the left-hand side, and they did the driver change, so now it's Brian Sellers back in the 48. Uh, and I presume it was four wheels and a full tank of fuel. Yes, fuel tires, right, and me. stickers. Okay, sticker tires. Right, an hour and 46 to go. That's uh, still a long way to go for that car, and they're not going to make that pit stop back that they took earlier on. No, they will They will certainly need another pit stop. So uh, they... I mean, the leaders in class haven't made their first pit stop yet. Indeed. In fact, Oz Negri's just coming into the pit lane now in the second-place car. Daniel Morad hasn't made one pit stop, and they've made two. Yeah. So that hasn't worked for them at all. And uh, we're... What, we're uh... An hour and 46 still to go which means we've done almost an hour, haven't we? Uh, Shea Adam with uh, more pit stop news. The 86 has come in. They are doing fuel and four new tires. Oz Negri is out. Jeff Siegel is in. And Andy Lally has climbed up onto the pit wall for the number 93. So Captain Legg's job is almost done for the day. I still do not see a helmeted Patrick Long, though. He is still cool, calm, and collected behind the 28's pit box. That's because he's uh, Luftgefühlt. He is, in fact, air-cooled. Um, and anyone who knows Patrick's affiliation with all the Porsches will uh, understand the reason I said that. Uh, we also had the number 50 in there with uh, Cooper McNeil, I think, about to get out of that car as the 86 is rolling. Uh, yeah, confirmed. Cooper's done his job. Going to Jeanette about to get into the 50 Porsche. Now, the... the Gap, gap in GTLM has come down massively. It was uh, it was well over 10 seconds, wasn't it, yep. before the round of pit stops? It was now just mu not much more than a second between Giancarlo and uh, Keller. But now it's Joey Hand in second place. The Porsche had closed it down to eight seconds before the Porsche pitted. No, and no, no, then no, no. It, no, Yes, no, no. yeah. It, it closed it down to eight okay, seconds okay, before okay. the Porsche pit pitted. Indeed. And then it got it down to three and a half. I just mentioned that. Yep. But now the Porsche is still three seconds behind, but the Joey Hand... Uh, 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 Ford, why do I want to keep calling that Ford something else? The yep. Joy Hand Ford has got between them, so yep. that's something that uh, Joy Hand's found some some uh, some pace in the early part of this stint. But we saw the Ford quick on new tyres early on. Let's not yes, forget. Yes, that's right. Yep, we saw it really running quick. second early on, you're ahead of the uh, BMW, and then the Porsche, and then the Porsche making making ground in the latter stages of that first stint. 
it, it's a choice, I suppose, Owen, that you have to make with your team. Do you set the car up to be good on new tyres and full tanks or on virtually no fuel and worn tyres? And I can see where you would make an argument for both, but I'd always favour the latter. I'd like to be good at the end of the stint. No, you always want to be good at the end of the race because, remember, 30 minutes from the end, we cannot come in the pits because they close the pit lanes. It's always the short yellow, so you can't change tires at that point. So you always want to be good on old tires if you can make your car good. Uh, Jeremy, my question for you is some of these cars in GTD pitted early. I think on their fuel run. So I think they're opting for tires. You know, we talked keys to the race. As a driver, I want tires, tires, tires. Yeah. Give me tires every time I can. I think yeah. some of them short pitted here. Well, yeah, what's interesting, I think, Owen, is that uh, they, they came in as, uh, I mean, the number 48 car was in too early to be able to make it uh, with that, with that yep. unscheduled pit stop. But the other guys, I think, when they came in, they can get to the end from there with one, one more pit more. stop. So they're making their pit stop before everybody else. That will play into their favor if they can stay on the lead lap in case of a full course course. So, particularly those cars toward the back when they came in, uh, they, were, they weren't going to win the race by following everybody else to yeah. run a different strategy. Jeremy, the GTD leader has just come in. Let's have a word with Shane, find out what happened there, and then you can tell me how many laps longer he went than pretty much everyone around him. Good grief. Patrick wanted to get ready for a stint faster than anybody I've ever seen in my entire life. He was helping it suited and booted by the time that Morad came into the pit lane. They took fuel and four new sticker Continental tires. Daniel Morad got out and went up onto the pit box, and he's rightly receiving hugs from all his crew. Yeah, but they've lost the lead. Jerome Mull, now that has worked for them. They have pitted uh, on lap number 23 and we're on lap number 38 at the moment. So that has worked for them. There with that little sort of shortish stint early on. That's uh, getting on for what, a, a, a half to three quarters, half to two thirds stint for the 16 car. And they have cycled to the front of the field now. And I think that Andrew Davis in the Audi, which was, if I remember rightly, Jeremy, the first the GTD cars to pit. And they've come through in the second. Yeah. Bergmeister now in third in the 73 car, but he pitted at lap 32. That was a more standard stop. But that was a very, very long first run for Allegra. Indeed. But what that means is that exactly what Owen was saying earlier on. In the later stages of the race, they're going to make their pit stop after everybody else. If there's no cautions, they're going to have fresher tyres for the final stint there in the race. Go. So there's two completely different ways to looking at this. The... Uh, uh, the more aggressive approach is by number 16 and 57. They were the first two cars to pit, as you say, and their, their stint was near 22 laps against the 38 for Daniel Morad. Uh, but so, uh, you know, there are completely different strategies, and that will depend. If there's no full course cautions, it's looking good for the number 28 car. Uh, if, 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 if there is, and depending on the timing of it, it could be good for the other cars. So, you know, different strategies playing out, cool stuff. Yeah, Jeremy, I, I talked to the group at the 57 guys. They just didn't have their outbreak pace here today. And so I knew they were going to do something off strategy here, and that's what they've done. They've got back up to third here and to see if they can hold on here. Yeah, well, I mean, I, and, yeah, yeah. and they made their stop as soon as, as soon as the 45 minutes were up. They get John Bennett out of the car, get Colin Brown in and go for it because, you know, John's uh, not, nothing like got the same pace as Colin. Yeah. So get Colin in as soon as you possibly can. You can then, it, 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 the, the timing is right because they come and make that stop at 45 minutes. They can make one more pit stop for Colin midway through in, until the end of the race. Good to go. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and, that, and that's a fast car, that 54 car. So, yeah, 54 cars. Yeah. Quick, yeah. Uh, so you know they've, uh, they've they've played it exactly as one would have expected, and uh, they should be in pretty good shape. Jerome Mull now, Air Mull, as we named him up at uh, VIR after his antics at the South Bend at Turn Nine, when he was uh, considerably airborne in that 16 change racing Lamborghini uh, on his way to pole position, uh, and the race victory up there as the now find themselves with a 15 and a half second the, uh, margin of lead over Andrew Davis in the 57 Audi, which was that first car to stop then, York Bergmeister. So we will have Bergmeister and Long out on the track at the same time. Uh, they're separated at the moment by about 18 seconds. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Shit, Adam can't watch. Uh, those two, for those that don't know, long time teammates and very much good friends uh, on and off the track, but highly competitive. That could be very interesting. Both in identical specification Porsches. Uh, Pat Long, pit, pit boxes are, uh, alongside each other. Pat Long has just, uh, last weekend, was it? Up at uh, Sonoma, 
uh, secured his second World Challenge title, won the Sprint X and the full title with uh, Porsche as well, of course. Uh, his first title win was in 2011. So that is a battle that we would like to see on the track as well. OK, GTLM, Jeremy, you were absolutely right. That gap has come down steadily, but it is Joey Hand now. Interestingly, the Porsche 911 is still 3.5, 3.7 seconds behind Giancarlo Fisichella. His lap times aren't so bad. It's just the fact that Joey Hand has been quicker and has dragged gently and really quite sensibly on. It's a bit like being a long distance runner. You don't want to sprint up to the, the back of the guy. You've got to just pace yourself up there and try not to take too much out your tires. John, you're completely correct there. As a, as a driver, you know you're starting to close in on somebody. Just take a little bit of each lap. And your engineer's going to come on and tell you, hey, don't take it all in two or three laps. Just slowly inch up on them. And uh, that's what gets your competitor more worried. You know, you're slowly and you're coming. And uh, they start looking in the mirrors more and their mistake could happen here. This is going to be a really good battle for the lead here. It is, isn't it? And you know, it, he's closed right in. He's, he's with him now. And Dirk werner has been left about five seconds behind him. Mm -hmm. But look who's right behind Dirk Werner. That would be Bill Arblin and BMW. Uh, and then not too far behind him is Richard Westbrook, Martin Tomjic uh, as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how that is ebbing and flowing, that uh, the differentials in GTLM. Meanwhile, up at the front of the field, we talked about the, the gap going out over 11 seconds. It's now down to eight and a half between first and second. And also the third place car, Dane Cameron, is uh, closing in a little bit. It was, it was nine seconds back. It's now only five seconds between second and third. Live and coverage. Sorry, 50, and, excuse me, number 90 car is hanging right with Dane Cameron. Yeah, this is a really good run for Rega van der Zander. He's been behind Dane Cameron since they both came out of the pitch. The three Cadillacs, 10, 5 and 31, separated by 14 seconds. Rega van der Zander uh, just eight tenths of a second further back, the first of the non-Cadillacs. He's got 40, 40 seconds now on Misha Goitberg, who's been in since the start of the race. Let's not forget, we've still got to get Stephen Simpson into that car. And he's got a battle royale on his hands with Razzle Dazzle, Ryan DL in the number two Nismo powered Ligier from Tequila Patron ESM. Their teammates next up in seventh position. And Oli Pla, dare I say this, languishing in. Well, yes, Eighth position. Uh, and not only that, but he's a lap down to the uh, overall leader he as well. He is, yes, dropped off the lead lap. Good spot, Jeremy. He, he's, Thank you for that. He, he's been trying to get that back. He's actually been inching a little bit closer to Jordan Taylor, but he is still a lap down. In fact, he's right with him. Yeah. He, he should be coming past, past us, us fairly soon. Four. Let's have a look out the window. Remind everybody. Number 22 cars on the tail. And he's like, there's the leader. And there right behind him is Olivier Plow in car number 52 trying to get that lap back. And there's traffic ahead of all of those cars. And, of course, all the traffic now is battling for class position. You're listening to live coverage from Trackside. It's IMSA Radio and IMSA TV uh, around the world at IMSA.TV. Here in the US, you can watch the pictures on FS1. And if you want our commentary, well, you can have that in audio too if you don't have the bandwidth or you're travelling around. Don't forget, you can take us with you even if you uh, can't get us on data. 118 channel for Sirius, 205 for XM, and, of course, at RadioLamont.com on RS2. That's the new home, 24-7. IMSA content on IMSA Radio. Jeremy. Watch the number five car trying to find his way through some GTD traffic there. You know, before the round of pit stops, uh, Ricky Taylor was 13 seconds clear of the number five car, OK? Now, the gap from first to second to third and fourth is less than 10 seconds. The top yeah. four cars within 10 seconds. That hasn't happened since about lap 12. We're now on lap 46. Uh, sad news that we hear, of course, of the end of the racing operation that is Stevenson Motorsport. The Camaro wasn't with us this weekend for the Continental Ties. Thank goodness that the Audi will be, uh, is here and will be at Petit Le Mans. Let's have a chat with Lawson Aschenbach. Some tricky strategy there. Oh. 52's got past number 10. Excuse me, John. That's the, significant. The BMW was, was inadvertently uh, balked. Jordan Taylor coming through turn four. That, and Oli, Oli Plaza said, I'm going for that one. Made the gap and he's now got back onto the lead lap in car number 52. And John is a driver. I was just going to come in. Ply's got to drive qualifying laps right now. He's just got to go, 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 and get that lap back on Jordan. Obviously, 
points for them. They need to be, play conservative right there, not get in the fight with them right now. That's a good point. That's a good point. Forceful driving from Pla took the opportunity as soon as he saw it. Let's go down for this cut up time pit lane report. Sorry to keep you waiting there, Shea, but significant on the track is Oli Pla's back on the lead lap. Significance for the 57 team. Andrew Davis now in second after some tricky strategy in an early stop with Lawson Aschenbach, who's with you now. Congratulations, first off, to Lawson Aschenbach, who secured another World Challenge Championship last weekend. That's five for you now. You're still in the points for this championship in GTD. Effectively, a top three finish, not out of the question. Are you guys doing this tricky strategy now, having Andrew up in a second, because you're thinking about points in the long run? Well, to be honest with you, we're thinking about winning the race. So <laughs> um, we've had a bit of a rough weekend. We kind of rolled off the trailer, and we struggled a little bit. The guys have been working really hard. We've made a ton of changes to the car, and I think we've settled on something that's actually pretty good over the long run. So Andrew's doing a great job out there. We decided to pit him early just because it, he was kind of in a tough spot right now, surrounded by people he was a bit faster in. But this is sort of a track where it's a bunch of freight trains, and it's very tough to pass people here. So, you know, he got into some clean air, laid down a bunch of fast laps, and we have, you know, basically put us in a pretty good position right now. But, uh, you know, it's not over yet. We know our next stop's going to be a little bit longer because of the feeling we're going to need. But, um, you know, the guys have a ton of fight in them still. We know the program's ending at the end of the year, but we're going to try to get as many wins as we can to close out this year, especially for Johnny and Susan Stevenson. Is there a bit of an advantage for the 57 crew since you and Andrew are both so good behind the wheel of the Audi that you don't have to pull your lesser driver out at an earlier time? Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps. Yeah, Andrew is an amazing driver. Uh, not only is he a great driver, but he's also a good guy, and he's one of my best friends. And I've been, it's been such a pleasure to race with him this year. He, he really knows what he's doing. He's a, he's a professional through and through. And uh, when called upon, you know, he can throw down the laps that anybody else can. So, uh, like I said, I know he's going to do a good odd job. I know he's doing a great job out there right now, and um, he's doing exactly what we need, and, and hopefully we can uh, keep this thing up front. These boys already have a win at an undulating track. Good luck winning again here today. Thank you. A couple of things to watch out for on the racetrack. Alessandro Balzan, championship leader with Christina Nielsen. That car was in ninth. He's moved up gently, steadily, without any kind of fuss, up into sixth position in class. That is exactly what's been happening all season long. Meantime, at the front of the field, the pressure beginning to be applied from behind to the leader who's just gone up the inside of the 96. That was a replay. BMW, Jesse Crod, that was from a couple of laps ago. That was a replay uh, of, uh, of number 10 car getting loose on the exit there. That's when number 52 car went past oh, yeah. him to regain the lead lap. But Jeremy, it's all starting to come together. It's Hugely. not just the fact that Joao Barbosa's is now only three seconds behind the leader. Dan Cameron, now only six and a half seconds behind the leader, and Rinka van der Zander is now only seven seconds behind the leader. So the top four, it's like a big concertina. We're getting a big yeah. squeeze of those top four. That's exactly right. And it's the other guys who are picking up pace over the number 10 car. Uh, and uh, Jordan Taylor, all of a sudden, uh, sort of cruising along outside, uh, out in the front there, is not anymore. And he's, he's turned some good lap times, uh, a 20.3 last time around. Uh, he's turned some 19s. Uh, you know, in the early part of his stint, he's now getting, you know, fairly worn tyres. He pitted on lap, what, 31, so he's got uh, 18 laps on this uh, set of tyres, uh, uh, which is uh, nearly two-thirds of the way through a stint. So he's falling off a little bit, but at this stage in the game, uh, you know, his brother was running similar lap times during the first stint. So it's the other guys who are making some ground toward the leader. That's interesting, isn't it? And, and you know, clearly they have got a very good car and two very good drivers in the number 10 squad, that uh, gloss black Cadillac. But the rest of the teams, it would seem, Owen Trinkler joining us in the booth here, the rest of the teams have made some adjustments and got their cars better. Wayne Taylor Racing happy with what they're doing, they're happy with the balance, and they've clearly still got a good car, at the moment still the best car. But the other teams have, have whatever changes they've made in those pit stops, they're starting to work for them. They are, the, obviously the, the ambient temperature today is highest we've seen over the last three days since we've been uh, at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. So I think some air pressure changes may have gone on during the pit stops because those are green flag stops. So you're not going to take anything that you want to be fast as you can on that stop. So maybe some Good air point. pressure changes yep. going on. And, but obviously the long run, 
these other prototypes, the, the Action Express cars are starting to get faster, hanging in there with the 10 car now. And, and it could be, of course, you know, they changed tires. They started on the tires in which they qualified yesterday. Track conditions yesterday when they qualified, not as hot as they are now, could no. be, particularly in GTLM, not, not, of course, in a prototype, because they're all running the same tire, but in GTLM, maybe they've switched compounds. Yes, yep. yep and added. there's a lot of things you can do. We, we know they can run different compounds on different corners of the car. Mm. Yeah, set the car up asymmetrically as well. You work the, I'm guessing, or the, you work the right side tires here far more than you do the left. You do, yeah. And I, I had a chat with somebody from Michelin earlier uh, before the race today and said, hey, some of the teams may go on the medium compound on the front, hard on the rear to save the rear tires so you get to drive off and not burn up the rear tires so much. But you get to turn in with the medium tires to turn in down to the apex, which you need here. We yeah. have heard in the past uh, that they have had all oh, no. four different tyres on those Michelin short cars. Off has gone the leader, the previous leader, and that is Pat Long aboard the 28 like Allegra Motorsport off, car. It? I think he's pulled that car off. That looked like a controlled drive into the gravel and right up to one of our camera positions. It's uh, on the exit of or the entrance his. to turn four, yeah. just beside our booth. He's driven it off towards, yeah, uh, that is a transmission or a driveline problem for that car. Came out of turn three, and he's just tried to get that out of the way as far as possible. Ah. Now, can that be recovered from there? There is a gap in the fence, but we've got a TV camera uh, in it at the moment. Wouldn't take much. Uh, 22, Johannes van Overbeck, and I've seen that. He was right in behind, and he's come into the pits for his second stop shit, Adam. It was actually perfect timing. They were planning to bring him in before Pippa Durrani has taken over his first racing laps around Monster Raceway Laguna Seca. They've also got the two car in. They've also already done the driver change for the two machines. So this will be fuel and tires only. The driver change nearly complete. And now Pippo is being told to go. Johannes Van Everbeck done for the day. And the two fuel and tires going on that. So Pat Long must have felt something going awry coming out of turn number three. There's a bit of something behind the car there, but that could have just have been easily as been dust offline. So I'm not going to read too much into that. But Pat, ever the gentleman, ever the sportsman, ever the experienced driver, my goodness, if something's going wrong on a Porsche, he will know it by almost by smell before he even sees it, feels it, or hears it. And that car... There is just, I think, enough room if we can get the gate open to get that car pushed through. Pat is doing the right thing and staying in the car. It's the safest place for him right now. And yep. 9 1 2 Jimmy Bruni in. Now that's interesting as well because that seems a bit early to me. And off has got the number two people. Durrani, uh, excuse me, Ryan DL yep. in the number two. And that's right after a pit stop. He's just come out of the pits and made that mistake because that he was, was a turn three. It was a turn three, and he's literally on his outlap. He's just come out Cold of the pit tires. lane. Yep. Cold tyres. Uh, but he's got away with that. He skipped across the top of the, yeah, won't do the this. gravel. Won't do this new Continental Tires any good, Owen Trinkler, <laughs> will it? <laughs> no, here it is. It's a replay. As he comes in here, it's got in too hot. A little bit of lockup maybe there also, too. Yeah, just in too hot. Yep. And then it's That's about rally crossing yeah. a prototype through, which is not really what you want to do. It's not. He lost a lot of ground, and uh, he's not done those tyres any good at all. The worry will be as well as if he's done any damage to the underbody or shaking something well, that's true too. loose. Uh, Ollie Gavin, by the way, is still struggling along with that uh, rear diffuser that's vibrating uh, at speed. Uh, Jimmy Bruni then out onto the circuit in the 912 at the moment in the Porsche. What a good job Renger van der Zander doing Massively. in the fourth place. He's really putting the pressure on Dane Cameron and now the gap from second to third Barbosa to Cameron is less uh, than two seconds uh, which is uh, really impressive and the gap from first to second is just over four. Yeah, that's gone up a little bit first to second. Second to third's come down bit, yeah. and fourth to first has come down as well by about a half a second, three quarters of a second as well. So it's still getting close to the top four coming together. And this is a beautiful thing to watch. This is why we love longer races. Sprint racing, 35, 40 minutes, great, lovely. We like that as well. But this is why we like the longer version of the sport. Uh, this is It's akin to having to watch a whole baseball game rather than just one innings, isn't it? Because things happen, things change through the course of a, a longer event. 
And what we're seeing here is the relative strengths and weaknesses of the teams, the drivers, the setups, the cars, all being played, all being slightly changed, incremental changes to these. Out front in the GTLM, it was down to about a second. Giancarlo Fisichella leading still, and now has doubled that margin. It's two seconds again, back to Joey Hand, and then a further six back to Dirk Werner in the 911 in third position. By the way, the Pat Long Allegra Motorsports car still there and trying to get the gate open to get that car through beyond the tripoded camera that is right in front of the 28 car. It's been dealt with at the moment. The incident being dealt with, it's way off the track and not in a place you would expect to be to end up if you were driving, uh, anything's possible, of course, uh, but it is uh, a long way off the track that's been dealt with at the moment by, I presume, now a static wave yellow down there. I can't actually see that's what I was the just drivers. For, John, yeah, to see if there's a yellow out. And one place where he's parked, just to give the listeners, uh, he, there's an orange placard there, and that's always indicates for uh, a driver that hey, there's an open gate here where we can go through. Ah. They go in the drivers, meaning all the points around the track where we can actually exit the track. That's what Pat was going for. So it's he's right there and I don't know if they can pull him through that gate. I'm sure race control is talking to his crew and kind of figure out what a plan, obviously keeping him in the car and keeping him safe. But that's why you start to see those flurry of pit stops, people gambling that the yellow was gonna come out. I know yesterday they left the car out of turn five uh, yeah. for our race, yeah. in the Continental race there, basically the last hour there, but it was way off the track, and so they kept it green there, and that car wasn't affected. Oh, that was green. They didn't even put a standing yellow there. No, that car stayed there the last hour. I saw it there. We had a couple of yellows there, but it did a standing yellow, but once we did a few laps, they took the yellow away, and it was... I reckoned everybody knew there, where it was. Where it was, yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, well, you see, you know, you, it, that's nice. The race controller's got to give treat the drivers like adults sometimes until you guys don't behave like it, then you get slapped on the back of the head. Yeah, occasionally we do that. <laughs> <laughs> the the issue for the TV director is that Pat Long's taken away one of his shots going up the straight. So the TV director will be shouting uh, about uh, getting that moved. Come on, get that car moved. And I bet the language is slightly more fruity than that. Uh, Bubba Clark just confirming that <laughs> in my ear that things are getting heated in the TV got in the TV truck just behind us. Thanks, by the way, as ever, to our colleagues uh, at TV uh, who give us the uh, the pictures here in the booth for some of the earlier sessions as well as this live feed that you're getting around the world on IMSA TV. We simply couldn't do our jobs without you. And uh, thanks to the whole crew, as ever, for working in tandem uh, with us and our audio. Good to. Uh, be embedded right here in the TV compound again as we have been all year, been good working uh, with the guys again this year. 3.2 seconds at the head of the field in prototype. Uh, let's go down, Daniel Morad is in the pit lane with Shea Adam. Daniel, what happened to Pat? Things were going so well. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess the, the crew just told me I was walking back to change my shirt to probably go back in at the end, but uh, we unfortunately broke a drive shaft. Uh, I'm not sure if it was due to the contact from the 48 Lambo at the start. Um, we were able to get by uh, into turn one and on the exit of turn two and uh, going into three. Yeah, I just got tagged in the uh, right rear corner. So, yeah, I don't know um, exactly which side. It doesn't matter at this point. Just a shame for, uh, for our Porsche. You know, we were running so strong. Our pace was great on old tires. And as you saw in that first stint, we were able to open up a really nice lead. So, you know, hats off to the Allegra Motorsports crew. We, we really worked hard all weekend on that long run pace. It was going to be a tire degradation race the entire way through. So, um, yeah, I mean, not much more to say after that. I just saw the car get pulled behind the wall on the TV screen. So, you know, there's always petite. The good news for Daniel, at least, the last time he raced here was in a Formula Atlantic car. He broke his elbow on the uh, side of the car. Both elbows are good this time. And I think Daniel's absolutely right. I think that car has gone. We've had a couple of pit stops while Shea was talking there. Ollie Gavin is out of the number four Corvette. They had a good look at the left and the right-hand side of that diffuser at the back of the car. Uh, Antonio Garcia now aboard the number four. And that'll be, that'll be another at least another pit stop for those guys before the end of the race. Uh, also coming in the 31, Dan Cameron 
uh, staying in the 31 car, but having dropped to fourth position. But he'll get, I think, that one of those places back at least because the five Cadillac and the 90 Ligier coming in from second and third at the moment. Uh, Ryan DL and people to Rani, by the way, putting in cracking laps, uh, including Ryan DL doing a 19.7. Uh, last time around against that car's best of a 19-1, which I think he set the lap before that. Yeah, and, and those two, of course, do, they just made pit stops uh, four or five laps ago, so fresh continental tyres there. The fastest lap of the race, just to recap, was a 118-3, set a long, long time ago. Uh, Oli Pla, by the way, has turned an 18-5 in the number 52 Ligi, the PR1 Matheson Motorsports team. They got a lot of support this weekend, based in Fresno, California, as our leader is on to pit lane on lap 59. Main time side by side battling on the front straight the new boys this year in GT Daytona Lexus versus Acura the 93 the dark colored car going up the inside and trying to get that position going into the first couple of corners I think just about held uh, onto it there and that was Andy Lally coming through the field meantime Shea Adam has this continental tire pit lane report with the leader Jordan Taylor in the pits and Jordan is not done driving yet they are leaving him behind the wheel for this next stint but they are giving him a whole lot of fuel, a windshield tear off, very important here for Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, a very dusty track. Most importantly, they have given him four new tires, just waiting for the right or the left sides to go on. Air jack comes out, fueling still going on now. Good job getting the car going again for Jordan Taylor. No fuss, no muss. You didn't hear any big rev of the engine there. Nobody running around yelling and shouting, nobody pointing. And that's exactly what you want in a pit stop. That's right, do your job. And they've been doing it all year. So. And he's got back out in the lead of the race, I think, Jeremy, despite Dean Cameron putting in a cracking mm. lap. And 19-3 is the fastest lap of the of the 31 cars race so far, and that's vaulted him, for the moment at least, into second position. Yeah, we're still waiting for number 85 car to come onto pit lane for its second stop. But once again, the uh, Rega van der Zender car losing a lot of ground in the pit lane there to Dane Cameron, better part of 10 seconds. Yeah, but that means that Cameron has vaulted the five Cadillac, uh, which has made its second pit stop. So that is a net advantage of something like four seconds between uh, Dane Cameron and Joao Barbosa in the 31 and the five Cadillacs. Run out of the same team, of course. 31 and five, such a great addition to the series, this DPI category and Action Express with lots of experience in Daytona, Pride run, uh, Daytona prototype running. have taken to it very well indeed. In GTLM, Fizzy oh. Keller now has pulled the pin, and he is five seconds ahead as turn three's came, claimed another victim. And it's Bill Orbelin in the BMW number 25. Yellow flags are out. They need to get the 85 car onto pit lane if they can. Yep. No, oh, and he's not no. getting out of there. And Dane Cameron's just gone through. I reckon Cameron's in the lead. Dane Cameron in the lead. Shea Adam, you were watching that on the pit lane straight. He's about five seconds, by my reckoning, ahead of the 10. But the 31 crew gave a big cheer when they saw the 10 go back out. And sure enough, it has shaken out that the 10 is in second. Huge turnaround. And that is down to quick pit work by Action Express by the wheel and engineering team. And also a fabulous outlap, couple of outlaps from Dane Cameron. And that is what you've got to do. Talking about earlier on, Ali Pla trying to get his lap back by... Uh, by doing effectively qualifying laps and that's what Dan Cameron did there Owen. he came out the pits and just absolutely nailed it no you've got to do we you know you can't get the countdown before you come into pit lane those laps have to be perfect and qualifying laps because you know you're going to get some new tires when you come in obviously the pit lane here's a little bit tricky late I mean Dane did a great job getting on pit lane and the crew did what they need to do to get him off pit lane and that's exactly why he won the championship last year Correct. one of the reasons he won the championship last year and he can do that and do it with metronomic uh, efficiency uh, a lot of GT LM cars have come in and they've just beat, they've just beaten the pits closed, I think, uh, Shea Adam. You can tell us who came in and whether they got in in time. Everybody made it in on time. The number 911 Porsche is the first one to get back out. Fuel and tires for them. The 67 waiting in line now as well. Great light at pit exit has just come on.
the three is exiting as well as the 24 fuel and tires for everyone and the only gtd car to make it in was the 54 the core autosport car well that's worked that for them porsche got fuel and tires as well that's worked for them they were an early stopper before thank you Shea. almost an accident in the pit lane as dirk Werner is motoring out of the pit lane and then saw the red pit close sign just about got stopped before he went out Poor Dirk Werner, uh, poor Richard Westbrook, rather, behind him in the 67 Ford was really taken aback by that because he was expecting to get on it. I think his finger must have been hovering to take off the pit lane <laughs> speed limiter. And it's, oh, no, on the brakes, on the brakes. We have seen accidents in pit lane before. I think uh, Petit Le Mans last year or the year before. Uh, when we, when we, it was uh, Patrick Pele who uh, ran into the back of somebody in the uh, in the run out of pit lane. In GT Daytona, by the way, number 53 car, a uh, 73 car, excuse me, got ahead of Andrew Davis and the Stevenson uh, ah. Audi, as also did Alessandro Balzan, who had been closing on that battle. We had a three-car battle for second place. Jerome Moore was well down the road in car number 16 for change race, and that's the Lamborghini. But there's a big battle between the number 57, 73, and 96, with the 63 closing in, the Ferrari closing in, and the Ferrari's now up into the podium position yet again. Yeah, this is bad news for the other Ferrari, though. This is the Giancarlo Fisichella in the 62 leading GTLM but did not get in the pits neither did Joey Hand in the 66 car and everybody behind him or at least the next four cars behind them all got a free pit stop before the yellow flag came out. Now, I'm not quite sure where, how the number 22 car, Pippa Durrani lost a lap during that sequence of pit stops. Maybe Shea can find that out for us because he wasn't necessarily in danger of going lap down so we saw it was number two car that went off the road down there when he came out of the pits yeah, wasn't number it? Two, yeah, number yeah two. not the 22 uh, so don't know how the 22 car went a lap down but he is a lap down so for Pipo Durrani that's bad news Longer obviously. Longer pit stop because they did a driver change when nobody else did yeah. and it cost them a little bit of time wow. on pit lane. Well it shouldn't, you shouldn't it lose shouldn't. time. No no it shouldn't. In comes the 85 it's now the pits I don't think is yeah. are open uh, Shea, are they? Yep oh, they, they, are? Were, they were just opened uh, a couple of moments ago as a matter of fact the 85 and the 52 the only prototypes taking advantage of this opportunity to come in and just additional confirmation it is the 31 ahead of the 10 and the uh, pace car uh, the safety car queue the 52 is in they are doing fuel and tires for ollie plaw but it is a driver change for the number 85 misha goikberg out steven simpson in fuel and sticker continental tires for the 85 when the gt cars come in it looks like we are going to be getting the 63 in as well as the 25 once it's been retrieved um, and the 66 and the 62, as you mentioned, John, those are our GTLM cars doing. Now, because these, uh, the 85 and the 52 car didn't come in before the caution, it's not, not going to be terribly costly, but it is going to be costly in track position, particularly... Well, no, they, they, were the, they were the last cars. They, they were fifth and sixth before the uh, caution period, so it's not really going to be very costly for them at all. They'll probably, however, fall behind the number two car, um, which uh, once these pit stops are, are completed. So it certainly cost them a position. And um, I'm a little bit surprised they wouldn't have bought number 85 car, well, either of them in before <laughs> the caution came out. I think it's pretty obvious there was going to be a caution. Maybe just in the wrong part of the track. That, that's no. you live was, and die no, by there that. Was, there was more. That I, I reckon race. It, it seemed to be quite a long time. Once. I reckon race control gave everybody an opportunity to well. dive in the pits and they need if they need if they wanted to before okay. they threw the yellow. Well, an hour and 12 minutes, and we get to take a breath. Although I suspect the chair Adam is going to have to go to another stream of consciousness. How are your picks going in the IHG Rewards Club podium predictor? Uh, I was doing all right till a moment ago. I picked the Taylors to to win this one, and we had the. I didn't pick the 62 Ferrari. I've got to say, but I've got one of the Fords in there, so I'm not doing too badly. Uh, if you haven't ended this weekend, then. Uh, don't forget, we'll be opening up the picks for Petit Le Mans for Road Atlanta very shortly. And who is our expert going to be for Road Atlanta? Have we decided yet? Oh, OK, that's uh, still to come, uh, still to be announced. Shea, back to you. Um, well, my picks were doing really well, but the number 912, the car that I picked to win GT Le Mans, just came in. I'm pretty sure they were not part of the safety car train yet because they were the only GT car to come in. And normally the way it works is you have to, like, come around behind the safety car before you're allowed to come in for the pits open for the GT cars. I'm not sure if the pits had been called open for the GT cars when the 912 yes. entered the pit yes. lane. Yes, 
So that might wind up being an additional penalty, and then my uh, it was tight, predictor but I think it was wrong. okay. I think it was okay. Well, no, because it's normally that the leading GT car has to be the first one allowed into the pit lane by by the way of the rules are. Uh, but now I have a lot of other GT cars, including the 62 Risi Competizione Ferrari. They are doing fuel and tires and a driver change. It is Tony Nylander in, Giancarlo Fisichella out. The four Corvette is back in, as well as the 63 Scuderia Course Ferrari. It will be fuel and tires for both of those cars. Both of the Riley cars, the BMW and the Mercedes, in for fuel and tires. And oh, there was a collision in the pit lane. The 67 Ford hit the 96 Turner BMW. The 67 Ford has been stationary on the pit lane at a stop just before its box. It was diving into the pit lane was Richard Westbrook as the 96 was going out. Now the 67. Richard Westbrook took no service. He is part of a three-car sandwich with a Mercedes on the inside and a Lamborghini on the outside. He has gone right back into the fast lane. No service for the 67. But uh, a mechanic over the wall sadly picking up bits of bodywork. That car is going to have to come back in. He didn't feel that he would be able to make it close enough to the wall for the fuel nozzle to reach. They sent him back out. The only car left is a 15 Lexus, the car that had striped this morning. They are still sitting just outside of their pit box. The lights are flashing. Not all is good. And the four is taking advantage of this yellow flag period. They are under the car, the crew. They've got three members under it. They are working on this Corvette to try and get that bit of bodywork under the bottom re-secured. The team said they weren't actually sure which bit was flapping because from what they could tell on the first pit stop, everything looked fine. Yeah, it was something very, very far underneath, I think, that was uh, causing... Uh, that shit, Adam with that Continental Tire pit lane report, a little fractious in the pit lane now. The bad news for Richard Westbrook is he'll still have to come in and take service. The good news is that whilst we're, we're under yellow, is he's not going to drop a huge amount of time when he comes back in. All right, he's going to lose a bit of real estate, but we'll uh, reset the field before we go back to green, see how things go. He's going to have to work hard, but with a new set of Michelins, he's still got half a chance of coming back uh, through Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, uh, interesting in GT Daytona. Jeff Siegel, Brian Sellers, Colin Brown, numbers 86, 48, and 54 did not come in uh, during that pit sequence. Number 96 car, however, I think was in right before the yellow came out. Uh, uh, and I think then came in again during this sequence, but he's got out, I think, ahead of everybody else. So yes. probably a quick splash of fuel, but it was, uh, it was moments ago that he came that in. That was the so car that had the contact with Richard Westbrook. So, yes, yep. you're right, Jeremy. Yeah. And he's now but shown us three pit stops, three times down the pit lane. Indeed. Uh, but that's going to play out really well for them, I think, because, uh, they, because they're going to vault. Well, they, they were Can running in fourth position. I, it's going to be, I think by the time we've got this caution f uh, period cleaned up, probably yes, and I think all of them probably can, which is why it's odd that they didn't bring the, the top three cars into pit lane. Richard Westbrook back into the pit lane. Shea Adam. The dive planes on the left front of the nose have been completely eradicated. Those were the bit of carbon that had flown off. So the 67 having service right now, they are doing fuel. Having completed that, they are taking the old nose off of the car, putting a new one on well they're having trouble getting the old version off they've now decided that they don't need the new nose they're going to forgo that they haven't done tires yet and the corvette uh, which is still on the pit lane having that rear bit of bodywork replaced uh, they still have many mechanics underneath so they did not do new tires for the 67 they looked at the nose but they put a whole new diffuser section on the corvette doing the work while they have the time it was the 14 lexus not the 15 my bad stopped on the pit lane but Robert Alon has just gotten it refired and goes back out. So now it is just the Corvette guys. And remember, this is the crew that practices everything. Should something like this arise at the 24 Hours of Daytona or the 24 Hours of Le Mans during the endurance race, they want to be able to know how quickly they can fix something that has gone wrong in a case of endurance. That's exactly what they've done. The four has just left the pit lane. Tommy Milner is still behind the wheel. Thank you. Yeah, I think I tried to put Antonio Garcia in that car uh, early on, which would have been a shock to uh, Jan Magnussen, who was expecting to hand over to him in the three. Uh, they're heading up the hill through the, what I'm reliably informed by my colleagues at, uh, at Quarter are called the Kirby Swervey bit uh, of the racetrack. Yeah, a technical term. That is a technical term. 
So just go back to that GT Daytona battle. It really odd that uh, number 86 and 48 cars didn't come onto pit lane because there's no way they can get to the end from here. Colin Brown, however, in that number 54 machine for Core Autosport, I think probably can. He was in, we talked about it when he came into the pits on lap 56, which was only uh, three laps before the caution period. Uh, and we were speculating then, they, we thought he was making that stop so he could get in and get to the end of the race. So I think he's probably looking pretty golden right here, right now, if, he, if he's got the pace. But he's going to be ahead of Jesse Crone on the restart. We're getting ready that for that right now, John. Yeah, this uh, yellow flag has given me the chance to get the IMSA radio cap out because the sun's just starting to come around to the position where it'll be a problem for us and for the drivers at certain parts uh, of the circuit. We are back to racing green flag is out and did cameron holds on to the lead that's all you can ask he's got now jordan taylor right behind him an hour and five minutes still to run it was uh, half a second across the line joao barbosa making it a cadillac one two three 31 10 and five this time around though all of the prototypes for sure are going to have to make a pit stop before the Great. end of the race and i'm pretty sure the gtlm cars are as well yeah. Jeremy, the car I think it's in the driver's seat is the 96 car. It came back in and it topped off. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don Slama called a great strategy there, yeah, topped absolutely. it back off. I think he, you can really save fuel at this track. You it was, I mean, it was only a couple of gallons because he'd been yep. only two laps previously, yep. but he wasn't going to lose anything by doing that and just gives him that little extra bit of a margin. Margin, Correct. yeah, yeah. So I think he's right in the driver's seat right yeah. now. Okay, well, got, and the 54 car, yep. which uh, has a little bit less, less fuel. Uh, yeah. Uh, got some news of some penalties. The 912 will have a stop and 60 for working in a closed pit. The 67, Richard Westbrook, drive through for the con for an incident with the 25, that car. So it goes from bad to worse for Richard Westbrook and ah. the 67 car. And that's of course the car that was uh, was uh, showed fantastic fuel economy last year. Last year it was in position perhaps to do that again this afternoon, but with, the, with this drive through probably not. Well, it's it's still on the lead lap in class, isn't it? So uh, how far back? It's only nine seconds back from its class leader. It's going to take a lot though. Yeah, but it's just serving its penalty now. In uh, quite a lot of damage to the 67 as it's back in to drive through the pit lane. Shea, what could you see as Richard Westbrook went by you at the pit lane speed limit? I could see a lot more than I think Ford wants us to. Uh, their inner wheel well liner is sort of punctured, so there is a hole in the left front bumper, but then back where the driver sits as well, there is an additional hole. I couldn't quite see Westy's feet, but I'm sure if I looked really hard, I would be able to. That was the sound of the 48 Paul Miller Racing Lamborghini. They did not come in when everybody else did. They waited until it went green. They waited, learned their lesson from Long Beach when they entered a closed pit after a safety car. They did fuel and tires. Brian Sellers is still in. Yeah, and they'll be able to go to the end from there as well, and that's what their gamble but they're, is. But they're at the very back of the pack. They're gambling that some of the GTT cars can't go all the way from there. Alexander Sims, by the way, in the 25 BMW, shown in 26th position at the moment, 8th in class and Ollie uh, Gavin's car now driven by Tommy Milner in 28th overall, 9th in class. Those are the cars who have had the issues. So does that mean that BMW was dragged out and continued in that case? The BMW? Yeah. Yes. Okay, fine. In uh, and through in the lead of GTD, Jeff Siegel in the bronze Acura, now ahead of Colin Brown by yeah. half a second. Yeah. No, he was. Uh, Siegel was in the lead at the restart, but he owes us a pit stop. Copy. Uh, so that puts Colin Brown there into second place. He came in just before that caution period, so he's going to be trying to stretch that fuel. His dad, of course, Jeff Brown, uh, a hugely accomplished engineer, is a race engineer and strategist for Core Autosport on that number 54 car. So in GTD, 86 <laughs> leads, that's the bronze Acura. Also start pit stop, off, a little bit off cycle with everyone else. Second Colin Brown in the 54 uh, Porsche and he's just half a second behind the leader anyway 2.1 seconds further back Jesse Kron in the 96 Turner BMW that is the yellow and blue car 
then Alessandro Balzan in the Ferrari, the championship leading Ferrari. That's the one with the uh, white stripe down the side, not the all red car. Side by side action uh, just below us going into turn five. No touch, no touch. 24 BMW and 66. And that was for the leading class. And that was a great move by the BMW of John Edwards, who takes the BMW to the head of the field. I'm just waiting for the timing to reset. Yes, it has been confirmed on the timing. So join your hand back down to second place. Tony Garcia in the championship leading GTLM Chevy Corvette. Those cars have not had the pace all weekend. And all of a sudden, Owen Trinkler, when it counts, in the last hour as we are hitting now, that number three car in third position. Yeah, they show up in, uh, when it, when money counts, you know, when the points pay out, they're up there. I mean, the one car, the 62, had, must have had a bad pit stop there. They went from leading down to, uh, you know, third or fourth in class. Now we got a good battle here with the Ford, Ford and the Chevy. Don't forget, they've got the slowest fuel fill, although they don't have as much to put in, um, but they do slightly struggle with that but they've got a great battle going on now 66 in that at the moment is joining hand with Tony Garcia going round the outside at yeah. turn six so Jerry thank you very much for second place yeah Jerry Hand therefore lost two positions and in the last couple of laps Joey Hand's only made one pit stop though he hasn't come in for the second pit stop yet so he must be on all the tires oh, he's fighting the tires then yeah he's yeah, fighting yeah, you the can tires see him right here he's that's right really that's really exactly right here, yep. exactly right and that's and that would uh, that would Add on to what I was saying, they're going to be struggling. The GTLM cars, I don't think, can get to the end of uh, this race without making an extra pit stop. So what Joey's doing here is trying to get into his pit window. Correct. That's yeah. what he's trying to do. Everyone else is going to make another stop. He's just going to make his last stop before everyone else, if that makes a difference. He's going to make his last stop first. Correct. He's, he's really hanging it out there, but he's going to lose position to Tony Vlander, And right behind him is Dirk Werner in the 911 Porsche. Vlander goes very deep into the Andretti hairpin. You can do that, <laughs> diamond off the corner and go deep, pull it back to the left-hand side for the second apex, so long as you know that the person up on the inside hasn't got the grip to be able to hang on to the inside kerb, which that Ford did not, and through goes Werner now. So from first down to fourth after the restart in GTLM, it's now that uh, 66 Chip Ganassi Racing Ford, fourth position, third is Tony Vlander, second. In fact, no, that... Uh, Joey Handcast down to fifth, isn't it? Because Dirk, Dirk Werner is fourth. Third is Tony Vila and Tony Garcia in the championship leading Velocity Yellow Corvette is in second position. And Jonathan Edwards, John Edwards leads in the 24 BMW in GTD. Changes there as well, Jeremy, as the 86 car of Jeff Siegel still hasn't made it stop, but presumably is struggling with the same problem. All the tyres. Yes, yeah. absolutely right. Um, and uh, I would... I would have thought he could have get, uh, got to the end from here, so I'm sure we'll see him onto pit lane fairly quickly. So as uh, it stands, Colin, Colin Brown, Brown is in the, the lead. lead. Yes, indeed. By yes. not very much uh, over uh, Jesse Crone in number 96 BMW that's finished second and first in each of the last two races. Alessandro Balzan playing the waiting game in third position, right the 63. There, he? He's there. He's right there, less than a tenth away from Siegel. Went down the inside. Siegel's in the pits. Siegel in the pits for his second stop. Shea Adam will keep an eye on that. He kicked, he kicked the tail off so far, John, when he came around that tight entry on the left-hander that it looked a bit like Tokyo Drift. The uh, back half of the car was going in a different direction than the front, but they are doing a four-tire stop for Jeff. A lot of fuel as he is sitting very, very patiently. Jeff Siegel has never gone a year of his career without a podium finish. He wants nothing more than to solve that here today. He said Petit Le Mans is a different story. Fuel probes removed. Jeff goes out. Don't forget to get in touch with us at IMSA Radio on Twitter. Keep those coming in. I can't always uh, mention them, but I'm keeping an eye on it at the moment. But there's plenty to watch on the track here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Channel 118 for Sirius 205 on XM around the world on RS2. The new home for IMSA Radio 24-7 service as part of the Radio Show Limited Network. Thanks for spending some of your weekend with us. It's been a busy weekend from here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca and on our other RSL channels with uh, VLN, with ELMS, Michelin Le Mans Cup, and now our main race of the weekend, the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, and it's getting really down to the money laps now. 56 minutes to go. Dane Cameron by one and a half seconds at the front of the field. 31 Cadillac from 10 Cadillac from five. Joao Barbosa in, in the 
third of those three Cadillacs in third position. They're separated by three seconds. Best of the non Cadillacs, another 1.3 seconds further back. The number 90, Brenger von der Zander, is in behind the wheel of the number uh, 90. That is the Visit Florida car. Then Ryan DL coming like a train. People to run. He is really wound up at the moment. Yes. And it's just done a 19 2. Indeed, but, he's still, but he is still a lap down. Oli Pla must have had a spin, I think, on that last lap because he's fallen back from the number 2 and 85 with which he was dicing. Lost eight seconds on that lap, yeah. That sounds like a rotation to me. In GTLM, John Edwards leads for BMW now ahead of Tony Garcia for Corvette. Third different manufacturer in the top three is Tony Volander in the 62 Ferrari. Long time leader, that car. Didn't get the best of the run in the pit stops. Then Dirk Werner. Four different manufacturers in the top four. Porsche number 911 in fourth. Five different manufacturers in the top five. Joey Han for Ford just ahead by about 15 seconds of Richard Westbrook, who is not out of this despite having had that drive-through penalty. He is now just 26 seconds away from the class leader. Extraordinary stuff. How many of those GTLM cars have got to stop again? That's the question. The GTD, Colin Brown, may be able to go. We think he can go to the end. Half a second ahead of Jesse Cron. He's having to battle and use up his tyres in that number 54 Porsche that leads GT Daytona. Alessandro Balzan now through into third position after the pit stop. Uh, from the 86 car, wasn't it, that was in there? Change for second in GTLN. Now, Tony Villander is ahead of Antonio Garcia. Made that move. I didn't see whether it was turn two or turn three, but he's ahead. The yeah. Ferrari now up into second place again in GTLM and third in GT Daytona. Yeah, he's not getting away from Garcia, who goes up the inside looking for a spot in turn number five. Just couldn't get it done, I don't think as the GTLM battle follows that around. Going up the hill, is it the Ferrari? No, he did get through. Garcia did get through. He's ahead of the red Ferrari, I think, unless, that was, the, unless that was the GTD Ferrari. It might have been the GTD Ferrari. So hard to tell from a distance when you can only see the back of the car. If you see the side, then... No, that is the GTD car, my apologies. Okay. My apologies, so Garcia, and there's two Corvettes in that line as well. That's another thing that could be throwing me out. So Garcia still behind, I believe, uh, Tony V. Lander, who is setting up, and he's immediately closed down on John Edwards. We're seeing some fantastic lap times right now amongst the leaders. Uh, very consistent in a, in a high 18s is the, the race leader, Dane Cameron. But uh, Pippa Durrani, like you were saying, just said his best lap, an 18-4, as number 66 car is on pit lane. This John. will be his last pit stop, Shea Adam. It is fuel and tires for Joey Hand, not even a clean off of the windshield. They are focusing all their attention on doing exactly what they practice. As a lot of white smoke comes out of this car, every last drop of fuel they could possibly get into it goes in. A lot of white smoke and a very hesitant car to get into uh, any sort of proper gear as he got a lot of wheel spin, but the 66 is done for the day in terms of pit stops. The new fastest lap of the race, Oli Pla, 117.921. That's a race lap record here at Master Race Wheel Laguna Seca. He's down the field, but proving the speed is there in the Ligier at this part of the race. Now, can Renga van der Zander extract some of that pace at the sharper end of the field? He's only four seconds away from the leader. This is shaping up to be an absolute barn burner. And Vlander's just got through into the lead. Tony Vlander has got past John Edwards into the first corner. And he's stretching away immediately down towards... He must have done that in the final corner, excuse me, as he... Went into turn 11, but the definite now, the red Ferrari is in the lead as they come back towards us. Down through turn three, and he's got a clear track ahead of him now. Can he exploit that through turn four? A new leader in GTLM, and here comes, here comes the Corvette as well, the number three car. The, the top three in GTLM are on the same straight heading up to turn five. Magnificent stuff. Meantime, in GT Daytona, the leaders have just come out of the second corner as well with Brad 
Uh, Kron and Balzan all line astern. And the Corvettes have been nowhere all weekend, have they, in terms of the lap times in GTLM? <laughs> well, now is when it counts. Antonio and as we've Garcia. seen uh, on a regular basis, yeah. Antonio Garcia uh, towards the closing stages. 51 minutes to go in this race, and he is charging and hanging right with that BMW John Edwards. I think Tony Villander's uh, looking pretty golden now. Uh, he's just, uh, you know, he's, he's been the quickest car all weekend long. Yeah, pushes that to 110%, military settings, thank you very much indeed. Uh, this battle in GTD is extraordinary as well. Colin Brown in the orange, blue and white Porsche from the yellow and blue of Jesse Krohn for Will Turner's Turner Motorsport team, the 96 car, then Balzan, championship leader, Alessandro Balzan. He was in fine form when we saw him at lunchtime. In fact, gave Shea Adam a lift down to the pit area. Uh, then it's Andy Lally. He's there as well. They Ooh, are all is. within nothing at all. Yeah, and, and Lally, they're within you're right. two seconds. Mm -hmm. And Andy Lally has just stalked those guys and gradually stealthed his way up to them. Just a little bit of a gap between them at the moment as the second place car comes through. Magnificent overtaking manoeuvre into the final corner by Tony Vlander. Stayed to the left-hand side as he came out to turn 10. Over the rise of the speed ball, as we've been describing it, just kept his nose in and then had to get the Ferrari stopped. Just about stayed on the hard surface. Maybe the outside couple of millimetres of the Michelins on the dirt there. But that is that is a classic overtaking manoeuvre down at the final corner at uh, Mazda Race Wheel again. Say again. Yeah, John, that's set up in through turn nine and then turn out to turn 10. You kind of fall down into that camber down at the apex and he set it up perfectly, popped to the left, made a late break move into 11 and, and actually got the power down coming out, which he needed there. Ollie Gavin uh, tweeting rather ruefully. Once again, our race has been shaped by contact from another car. I was hit from the rear turn one lap one and it broke the diffuser. Uh, the four car still running. Tommy Milner, though, a couple of laps down now uh, on, the, on the leader in GTLM. But having a cracking battle, actually, has uh, closed back up, having just done that car's fastest lap, a 123.6, and he's closed back up to Alexander Sims, and they are actually battling for eighth and ninth in class, 16th and 17th overall, and it's under three seconds, those two. So still something to fight for, minor points position, but still a points position there. 49 minutes to go, gentlemen. And uh, I get the feeling that um, we might have raised voices more than the odd four, one or two times <laughs> yeah. between now and the end of this race. Yeah, this is going to get interesting, Jeremy, as far as you know, the strategy here. We're just getting under 48 minutes to go. When the prototypes start to fall, about 45 minutes is what I think they can make it on fuel. So yeah, less gonna, than that, yeah, yeah, so, so pretty soon now, you're so, right. Yeah, pretty soon here. Then also the GTLM, when they make that final stop, we know the 66 is good now. Are they going to short fuel some of these guys that are leading that class right now and not take tires? That's going to be an interesting strategy call that's going to happen here. Are they going to try to do a quicker stop, splash of fuel, and just go? Or are they going to put tires on it? No, they're almost certainly going to put tires on because that is so crucial here. Plus, of I course, so. uh, unlike in, let's say, the, the World Endurance Championship for, for people who are watching uh, from overseas, you can change the tires the same, uh, the same time you put fuel in, and, and it's pretty quick to change, relatively quick to change the tires. So you might be giving up a few seconds, but yep. not very many. Uh, well, not thing, compared to your series, well, at that's least. Gonna be, yeah, I mean, it's going to be quick, though. They've got to be really quick. Oh, on, absolutely. On the, on this has got to be the money stop here for these guys absolutely. that have stayed out. Because I think Joey Hans... Would you the, risk right side only? You know... I've not seen anybody do I that. If you, this week, you, I mean, you know, if you've got none to lose, you're trying to win the race, go for it, you know. Then, uh, the the other mean, thing about the World Endurance Championship, Jeremy, is um, trying to go close to the end and short filling doesn't work anymore because bizarrely this year they've put in a rule that is a minimum pit stop time so you can't short fill at the end there's no advantage for you short filling at the end you have a minimum pit stop time and we saw the first time an infraction on that um, was uh, penalized was at the court around uh, which and I was I was in France uh, watching with French commentary, which was very, very good. Um, and unfortunately, there's no uh, free online timing and scoring for the, the WEC. Um, but I was following it pretty well with the French guys. And when I heard what I thought I heard, I was like, hey, what? And I had to go and look online and find the rules. And there is a minimum pit stop time. So there's no WEC. advantage. Yeah. Yeah. You're kidding. No. And somebody lost a position because they were one second under it.
Uh, What's the point of that? <laughs> yeah, I, well, exactly. I'm, I'm absolutely unbelievable. Right, here's the GTLM uh, field starting to play out. Tonio yeah. Garcia, the leader in the pit lane. Shea Adam. The first domino to fall. The question now, are they going to do tires or are they just going to do fuel? I know that they are going to do fuel because I see the fueler up on the wall. Car stays on its wheels, no tires for oh. the three. And to give you an answer on the 54, Colin Brown cannot go to the end. Oh, yeah, okay. oh right, yeah. okay. But can the number 90, well, can anybody else? Certainly, uh, you can anybody else. Jesse Crone and everybody else behind him have got three laps more fuel in than Colin Brown. Three laps. Is it that close? Dare you? You see, Balzan doesn't need to roll the dice. He's, you know, he's in a championship leading position, but he's he's got to make sure he gets good points here. Andy Lally, I reckon he stay out. Lally wants the victory, so Lally will run that until it's coughing and spluttering, yeah. and basically he'll have to coast down the hill. That's fine. He'll give that a go. So, yeah, my guts uh, tell me the BMW is going to be good to go. I mean, I, I think Don would not have made that call on that uh, on the 96 car. The well, car. I mean, it gives him a better chance at least. Yeah. I mean, he'll know whether or not he can make it. Uh, but he's, you know, he's, he, he made the decision to come in, top it off, uh, and give himself the best chance. How easy is it to save fuel here? If you, if you if you need a bit more, you have to do it from the start of the stint, though. You can't start doing it with 10 laps to go. No, but how that, easy is it? And I think it's actually pretty easy. This track, you're not on full. I mean, you're full throttle, but you're not up to the higher gears as much as you are at some other tracks. And down the hill through the corkscrew, you can really roll the speed through these turns. Now, there's been a bit of bounce before. Lead us in. No, lead lead us in. Yes, okay, lead us in. Lead us in. Let's take this Brilliant uh, pit stop yep. from the 31 car. Jordan Taylor goes back to the lead. Shit, Adam, with this Continental Tire report. Unlike the three car, the 31 Cadillac is doing fuel, and they have done the right side tires so far. I'm waiting to see if they're going to do the lefts as well. The 22, the one that was down a lap, the Nissan DPI, they have already done the right side. They are doing the left sides as well. It is a four tire stop for the 31, the Wheel and Engineering Cadillac. And every Every last drop of fuel they can get. Dane does not stall it this time. Learn from his mistakes on the last pit stop. 22 is nearly done with their pit stop. Waiting on the fuel now. Oh, the car goes back up on the air jacks. They had a little bit of trouble replacing the, which one was that? Right rear, I suppose. And now comes back on the air jacks. That was a slow stop for the 22, but a good one for the 31. Oh, is a they did not actually secure the wheel. One of the wheels is loose on the Nissan. A lug nut went flying down the oh. pit lane. Oh, dear. Well, so people's going to have a slow lap yeah. here. Let's hope well, he down in any case. So. Balance of performance, Jeremy. You were about yes, to Yes, I us. was. In GT Daytona, this is very significant. Yes, Since the last round, the BMW finished, won the last race for a second before that. It's got a six-litre smaller fuel tank than it did at the last race because it had been going a bit longer than everybody else on their fuel stops. Uh, and uh, so, therefore, it, it won't be able to go as long as it did in the last few races, as we see the uh, other leader, number 10 car on pit lane. Top five are in. Shit, I don't... Just about every prototype left to go comes out of the pit lane. Fuel and tires for the 10. Fuel and tires for the five as well. The two is up on its air jacks, fuel and tires for them. 90 is doing the same thing. They've already changed the right side. The fueling's still going on. They might have just done right sides only, actually, on the 90. I didn't actually notice them doing the left side. Two car is having the tires still changed. 90 beats everybody back out. I think they did right side only. The five car goes to leave ahead of the 10, still waiting on fuel for the 10. Now the Wayne Taylor Racing car leaves followed by the 85 and then the two, which almost hits the wheels left out on the pit lane of the 85. So brilliant strategy by the 90 then, just a two tire stop, but the 31 has gone through, but they're all chasing Oli Pla now. Yeah, who hasn't yet been. He hasn't made his last pit stop, and but he doesn't have to yet. He's just turned a very quick lap, Oli Pla, 19-7, that's a good lap at this stage of the game, but he was, you know, because of that spin, we presume, oh no, we didn't see it, but he lost a lot of ground Nine on one seconds, lap. seconds, didn't he? Yeah, he's, seconds. he's not going to be able to make up that ground. He will be in uh, next time around, or, or the one after, I'm sure. 63 but if he's got laps. some clear laps, uh, now's the time to do it. But brilliant strategy by number 31 team there. Got Dane Cameron out. And fabulous to see uh, the number 90 car. It's been stuck behind somebody all race long. But a brilliant drive by uh, Mark Goosens and particularly by Rang uh, and Rang of Zander. And if he's now got himself ahead of the Cadillacs, he will be delighted. And he'll be hard to dislodge. Yeah, and that uh, number 90 with, we think, only two tyres. She'll confirm that for us, I'm sure. 
in a moment or two. Uh, that's what you said. Sometimes you've got to roll the dice. Yep. You want to win the race. Yep. They're not in the championship hunt. No, they're not in the championship. Roll the no, dice here and see. Yeah, yep. just go for the win. And it looked like the 10 car, Shake Mate can confirm this too, is that on the right front tower got hung up there a little bit. As we were watching here on the monitor, it looks like that's why their pit stop was slower than everybody else. And it only takes those slight things. Now, in fairness, the, the fuel hose was out of maybe a second or only couple of seconds before the car came down but that's that's two seconds that may be in the track position that they needed to win this thing so Oli Pla now by 25 seconds he can't do a pit stop in that time it should have been over 30 it still wouldn't have been enough but Pla is putting in the laps of his life here even through traffic a 120.1 last time around it's not that long since he did a 117.9 as in comes the 48 of Brian Sellers with a right rear puncture. It's not been their day for the Paul Sitting GT Daytona car. Currently led by Colin Brown, who the team say, the coast guys say that they can't go to the end from here. Jesse Cron has three more laps of fuel in the 96 Turner BMW in second in GTD. How close is that going to take him? This uh, 60 laps are further, uh, 60 laps, so that was a, that's the same amount of fuel then for Alessandro Balzan as the BMW in third and Andy Lally in fourth. So 96, 63 and 93 all together on the track behind the 54, but all with three laps more fuel on board. In GTLM, Tony Vlander stopped last at lap number 62. He has to stop again. He's now on lap 80. He's got John Edwards nine seconds behind, who stopped on lap 59. Dirk Werner, last stop on lap number 62. He's in third position. Tony Garcia, last stop on lap number 77, and he's in fourth position in the championship leading car. Ooh, that's so close, so close. And the two leaders in two of those classes I've just mentioned, Shea Adam, their teams are on the wall. They are the 52, the PR1 Matheson guys, they came up on the wall. He is in the pit lane now as well steps out that is a very tricky pit lane to get right and you can very easily get it wrong but Olivier Pla recovers they have a Gatorade bottle in hand with a straw so uh, Olivier's drinks bottle inside Shea, the car Dave, not functioning Dave Cameron properly. is not through he's just gone through so there's 20 seconds before Dave Cameron crosses the line they're not going to get out ahead no. because they won't get the fuel in inside but well, they, this is going to be really interesting where he rejoins they've done right side tires they're doing the left side tires now the fuel in probe is still in as the 90 comes by their pit box now the five goes by now car is still up on the hijacks 10 85 he's going to be behind the 85 and probably behind the two as well but he is going to have the best tires at the end of the race definitely going to have the best tires at the end of the race and what we know is that Oli Plough can use those tyres, who stayed behind the wheel, by the way. Sorry, I, I interrupted you because I was interested to see where the other cars were on the circuit. Uh, Stephen Simpson has found some speed in the 85 in fifth position, just done the best first sector of that car. That was a sub-30 second. In fact, he was the one of the quickest guys through there. Joao Barbosa finding some speed as well. Now, GTD, let's keep an eye on that. And Tony Vlander should be in anytime soon. As well, he will drop down through the field because that car takes a very, very long time to fill. They have a slow fuel fill rate, so they'll be wanting to put in as little as possible into that GTLM leading car. If you've got the choice of which car you can be at the moment, do you want to be Dan Cameron or do you want to be Franka van der Zander with four tyres against Dan Cameron? Leading with track position, but two. Owen Trinkler. Are we going to get a caution lead? <laughs> I can't I tell you that. <laughs> so I want to be You want to be Pla? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, if, we're, no. if, if we're going to get a caution here late in the run, I want to be Pla because he's got uh, the freshest tires out of anybody yeah. right now. And that's what, I mean, those guys came from a lap down. And so that's the only strategy they had, they could do here. We're starting to get yep. close to um, seven minutes away from being under 30 minutes. Some of these GTLM guys are going to have to pit here soon because once we get under 30 minutes, if the caution comes out, the pits are closed uh, for a short caution. Yeah, good point. Good point. You can't gamble on that. Stephen Simpson just turned a 19-1 in 
last time around. Fastest man on the circuit. Yeah, but uh, he's been sort of trapped there behind, he's trapped now behind uh, Jordan Taylor, who's in fourth place all of a sudden, having dominated most all, all of the weekend. But what a great effort uh, by both Dane Cameron in particularly, uh, and also Ranga van der Zander, who's uh, closed, got closed in a little bit on the last lap, down to six seconds. It was 6.3, 6.5 before that. Uh, he's got a super fast car. Uh, Oli Ply, yeah, he's got a great tyres, but uh, he's too far back to be able to make yep. any challenges for the front, front position because, mainly, it's so difficult to overtake here. No, it is. That's why he's he's betting on a caution. That's the only strategy they could really yeah, play. Yeah, even then, it's so difficult to pass. He's yeah. going to have a hard time. But, uh, you know, he, that little mistake he made earlier on, he'll, he'll definitely rue that, whatever whatever it was that caused it. Yeah, and I think it's going to get interesting here, guys, too, with this GTD. If, it, if Colin can't make oh, man. it, he's going to have to start pitting here soon also. He got six minutes away before we hit that 30-minute mark. So they're going to have to make a decision here because you don't want to get caught out in that short caution at the end of the race. Yeah, but, but yeah, but at the same time, if there is a caution, he's safe. He's good, yeah. Well, so he yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no how point close? in coming in because if there is a caution... Yeah. How close is close? Yeah, yeah. It just depends how close he is, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. How, yeah, maybe yeah. Shay can find out how close is close, but... Um, well, he's, he's, got, he's got three laps, um, one of which was under caution, less fuel than the other guys. So maybe, you know, it's, it's a lap and a half less fuel in terms of... Shea, Adam, how far, how long does he have to go in time? Well, when he came in, there was an hour and 16 minutes to go. Yes, there was a little bit of caution in between there, but that is asking a lot of the Porsche. Yes, okay. I agree. Correct, we, correct. And that is asking a lot. They're rolling the dice. I mean, they're not in the points fight either. You're just no, that's right. The, they're, just, the they're, they're just going for the win. And, you know, that's the way that uh, that whole team plays it all the time. Uh, and, but it's, it is interesting to see what sort of lap times they're doing. I mean, he's holding up, he's holding up the rest of them. He's only you know, a second and a half off the ultimate pace of the GT Daytona car. So mm. he's certainly a good pace at this stage. What about Alessandro Balzan and the Scuderia Corsa team? Christina Nielsen doing... Herbert at the start, bringing the car through, handing it over. We've seen this story so many times before. He's 1.2 seconds away from the lead. If anybody stutters or falters, it could be better. But it looks like at the moment, another podium finish for the championship leaders. Christina stepping away from that team. She was telling Marshall Pruitt from Racer.com at the end of this year. Already testing other cars, she was seeing. In four... Another challenge, two years with that team, where it looks like they, well, they've certainly been, been title contenders both years. Second in the championship the year before that with another team, the MG. 62, Tony V. Lander in the pit lane. Shea Adam, this has got to be smoother than a smooth thing on a smooth day. I think that's what they've been practicing, smooth as peanut butter. They are doing four new Michelin tires. They have stickers on them, so Tony Milan are getting exactly what Owen Trinkler was wanting yesterday, brand new tires. They've done the fuel. They actually tapped the mechanic on the shoulder. The fueling was much quicker than the tire change by about three seconds, but Tony Vlander has enough fuel to make it to the end and new tires. And he's dropping down through the field. He's already down to third. Where's Garcia? Hasn't come round uh, as yet. So can Tony Vlander get out of the pit lane be before he comes through? There he's out of the pit lane now. So he's still going to be, I think, in third position. It's going to be very close indeed. We'll have to watch them as they come round. I can see the red Ferrari. Where is the Corvette? There it is, just going through. He's just going to join in behind it. And the Corvette is just ahead of the bright red Ferrari. Meantime, the 63 Ferrari is hassling the back of one of the Fords coming down at the braking area at turn number 11, trying to stay ahead of Andy Lally, who's within half a second of another podium finish. So 62 got out just ahead of Richard Bresbrook, so he's down in fourth position. So the top three in GTLM now is John Edwards leading. He might need a splash of fuel before the end. Dirk Werner Second place, might need a splash of fuel before the end. Tony Vlander, fuel to the finish, is behind Tony or Garcia, and I think Garcia's good. We're pretty certain that Garcia came in at the first opportunity. So it's three in third, 62 in fourth, and 67 in fifth. Nowhere Westy can make it from there, even with his light feet. He was hit last in on last 65. Surely he can't do this two years running. But I've got a feeling that Garcia here might actually be in 
another one of these Corvette coming from nowhere. It's, it's they're like the Mark Martin in 500 mile race <laughs> of this type of racing. He'd be nowhere for 400 laps or 400 miles, 450 miles. In the last 50 miles, you'd see that blue deuce pop up from nowhere and get a result. There's the positional pass going down into turn three. The 62, the red car of Tony Vlander, back up ahead of Tony Garcia. That's for third position. Yep. Now is Tony Garcia saving fuel there? Is he saving his tires? He came in at the first possible moment we reckon to get to the end, but it's very, very marginal. And that was lap number 77 when the Corvette came in. We're now on lap 89. Yeah, it was about 50 minutes to go when uh, that yeah, car came onto correct. the lane. That, that is, it, it's there, isn't it, Jeremy? It's there or thereabouts. Yeah. Vlander doesn't have to save anything. He can go full rich, full... What a nice position to be in, Owen Trinkler. There you are in a Ferrari, which has been great round here all weekend. They've had no accidents, no incidents in the race. Sorry, Beaky, if I've cursed you. You've got a brand new set of Michelin tyres and more than enough fuel to get to the end. You That's always nice. like that when you get that call from the crew that, hey, you're good to go on fuel, you have brand new tyres and uh, go to the checkers. One thing, the Corvette, I, and we have to reconfirm with Shea, I don't know if Garcia changed tires. I think we remember that he did not. Good point, he, he did not. Fuel, so that's why that pass was so easy there yeah. uh, around him. That's just old, new tires to old tires here, which we talked to, the tires just drop off so fast here. So Garcia's gonna have his hands full here at the end. Well remembered, well remembered. You're good, getting good at this. Can you stop being this good, <laughs> please? Uh, Shea Adam, news from Risi Competizioni about the state of mind of Tony Vlander. Should strike fear into the the hearts of every other team up and down the pit lane. He is fired up. The crew is saying his language is atrocious. He is cursing up a storm because he's in the zone and he wants this win more than the rest of the team does, it seems. Yeah, for, for, for all sorts of reasons. It's been a yes. really difficult year for Giuseppe Riccio. I gather, I gather his house was uh, pretty damaged, badly damaged in the hurricane, so we really feel for you, Giuseppe. I know you're not here this weekend. I'm sure you're listening in and we wish you the very best. And gosh, you know, with, with all the dramas this team has been through as well missed several races but every time the team has finished a bit on the podium it's been the class of the field this weekend and let's hope there's uh, just just under 30 minutes remaining for uh, for for the uh, for that team it really does deserve what is happening right now and, and, and this would be a, a really interesting moment if that car could get back i said when tony got the poll uh, yesterday I, I dare say a few people would begrudge tony and the team that pole position, Jimmy Bruni in his Porsche kit now, of course, one of the first over to congratulate them. I'd say the same about the win, and it would be a real comeback because this is the first time that the Le Mans car that was taken out unceremoniously at the Circuit de la Sarte in June has been back on a racetrack. So this is really one of those great sporting moments for this car. 3820 is the chassis number of this car. The, the car that was retired at the end of VIR was chassis, chassis, chassis 3810. Is this going to be one of those great sporting moments? It's shaping up for it, isn't it? It's shaping up as a cracker at the front of the field as well. Dan Cameron is eked out in at 3.3 3 seconds. Yeah. And okay. the, the top four, the top three, Jeremy, in the prototype class, 4.3 seconds. The top two in GTLM at the moment, two seconds. The top three in GTD at the moment, uh, three seconds. I mean, this is just nonsense. Well, yeah, I mean, God, the, the top four in GTD are absolutely Nothing. nose to tail. Yeah. I mean, they're going, I'm not sure where they are now, probably heading oh, right past us, heading yeah. towards turn five. Nothing to choose. They've been in the same order now for quite a while. 54, 96, 63, 93, Andy Lally at the trail, tail end of that little train. They pulled away a long way from now it's number 33 car, 16 car has dropped back. It's just made a pit stop. Here it is right now on pit lane. That was running and holding up that train of cars in the fifth place in the class. Uh, now, but, uh, uh, just, sorry, go uh, ahead, uh, while, it, uh, it, while it's making that stop, Dane Cameron's lead, by the way, down to three seconds now from the third, number 31 to number 90. Uh, six laps ago, that gap was six seconds from first to yes. second. Yep. They just went through a bunch of GTD cars Indeed. there. But uh, now, now, you know, Ranger can see Cameron out there. Yeah. Once you got him in sight, man, he's going to go for it here. These, these guys have had a... Well, that's, that's, the best that's season. another fairy story for these yeah, guys exactly. as well. They've had two nightmares uh, incidents 
uh, not necessarily of their making with uh, the previous chassis they've changed chassis they've found some pace i mean this is this is another great comeback story no it's a great track for them they finished second here last year yeah good to Ollie Pla there by the way Oli Pla, uh, another slow lap for Oli Pla, 135 uh, that's because he spun coming there out of the corkscrew well done jeremy that sixth sense of yours no oh, lap shot high Oops, he going? very lucky there to Scenic not route. high side it and uh, get the spread gravel all over the racetrack <laughs> <isn't that? laughs> no, no, just need some gravel out there to make it even slicker Whoa. and that was just a spin on his own down through the corkscrew he was getting close to the back of ryan dl maybe getting a little bit over excited yeah. ollie platt and uh, didn't do the track walk did he if he thought he could drive that car over there easily it's one of the things you've got see when you drive as badly as i do you're always looking for places you can turn around safely <laughs> i always think that's an important thing find the bits of the circuits that are hard standing that you can do a flick turn or turn around or shortcut if you need to it's always important <laughs> never crossed my mind <laughs> yeah. i like Although it is important because, yeah. it, from my perspective, somebody else made some mistake <laughs> and caused me to go off the road. I want to find out how I can get back on again. Yeah. <laughs> that and where the fire marshals are. That's the other thing. Yeah. I Good thing you're racing at Coda. Yeah, there's plenty of run off there. Plenty of run. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of run. Yes. Uh, 26 need signals minutes to get to back get... to the track. Yeah, I need to keep me pass on me just in case I have to <laughs> show to get back in again. Uh, 26 minutes to go. Dan Cameron uh, still leading, but now down to 2.6 seconds. Hello, everybody. If you are just joining us, you've missed two hours and 20 minutes that's led us, two hours and 15 minutes that's led us to this last 25. And now we are shaping up for a proper old fashioned grandstand finish not just at the front of the field, not just in one of the class, but in all three of the categories here. Uh, you need to have some kind of alien uh, system where you've got six eyes and three heads to watch what's going on at the moment. 2.687 seconds between Prenka van der Sander and Dane Cameron at the front of the field. In GTLM, it's down to a second between John Edwards in the 24 BMW, that's the black car, which remember, at the end of the first lap was dead last not just last in class dead last after being tipped into a spin 911 of Werner is second it's pretty much right with him too yeah the, they, they, they need to stop was a though. couple of seconds yeah we, we believe both of those two are going to stop and they are being eaten into three seconds two and a half seconds rather last time around by tony vlander so that 15 seconds gap between those two and the 62 is going to come down Massively, Antonio Garcia now under pressure from Richard Westbrook and not taking tyres for the Corvette when they came in with 55 0 minutes to go is starting not to look like a great decision. This is the championship leader, though, so he just needs to get this car home and get points. Absolutely. Uh, one minute 19.1 last lap by Dane Cameron. Clearly oh. found a little bit of racetrack and that has extended that lead uh, by a full second on the last lap over Renga van der Zander. Just this has been a great motor race. This is uh, this place often almost always turns out great motor races in the years that we've been coming here, which is every year for IMSA competition. One of the I think three circuits that are ever present since the forming of the American Le Mans series and the new IMSA era carrying on from that extraordinary racing. BMW number 24 going through yeah. the 11 fifth right turn. Him. And here come. So we've got we've got here a couple of cars who haven't really shown great speed. The 911 Porsche, the three Chevy. Now, all right, Tony Garcia is going to have to fight. Uh, let's also think about the 31. The 31 hasn't really been there all weekend. It's had a couple of decent sessions, but it was right at the bottom of one of the timing sheets, I seem to remember. We, we actually remarked on it. Yeah. I, I saw uh, D uh, Eric Curran this morning. He said, yeah, they made big strides. That the car was a lot better in qualifying. Yeah, he's not as quick as Dane Cameron. He does a very respectable job. Uh, and for a while, he was actually a second or third in qualifying. Might have slipped back a couple of places, but he had a good, uh, good strong opening stint. Dirk Werner closing in on the lead. His teammate is Patrick Pele. Here's Shea Adam to talk to him now. Patrick, as cool as a cucumber, how close are you guys on fuel? Uh, we'll see. 
<laughs> I mean, uh, for sure we have to save a lot, but uh, yeah, we're doing a good job for the moment. So, yeah, normally it should be okay. We'll see. Well, I know you had your golf clubs with you the other day. This area of California is very good for golf. You've at least been having fun while you're here, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I love this this part of the uh, U.S. It's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of uh, success here, so I hope uh, it's for today. Where has the pace come from today in the race? We haven't seen you guys at the top of the charts all week. The increase in temperature, what is it that's made you so fast? Uh, so fast. We are still 1.2 seconds slower than the Ferrari, so it's not so fast, but uh, it's consistent. I mean, uh, we know that uh, one of the key on this track is to be consistent, and uh, the new RSR is, uh, is working perfectly on this aspect of, uh, of racing. So also, we managed quite well to, to save some fuel at the right moment and uh, to set up the car for a long run. So that was the key, it's, uh, just a team effort for the moment. Well, the best news for you, we go to Petit next, a place where you've won overall. Good luck the rest of the day. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But the, with the, the, the final race of the season, Nick will be back on 9-11, so it's always something great. But uh, if we can win this one, it would be a big bonus. Yeah, Nick Tandy coming into the 9-11, Earl Bamba into the 9-12 for Petit Le Mans. And yeah, that was an overall victory a couple of seasons ago, wasn't it, in that wet race? for Nick Tandy and Patrick Pele. Patrick Pele, former champion, of course, in IMSA competition. And the first season, remember, this is the first time that that 911 RSR with the mid-engine configuration and the new aero, that's the first time this car's been here. Not one of the teams that tested here. And they may have, they've struggled at a couple of tracks that they haven't tested at, funny enough. They have tested quite a lot at Road Atlanta. Oddly, Porsche. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the pace close to there. Yeah, exactly Charlotte, right. So that should be a good track. And the, to Jeremy's point earlier, I, I had a chat with Dane just before I walked into the booth today. And Dane said, you know, as long as he could take tear, care of his tires there early on the run, that he felt like the pace was there in his car. As long as the car didn't get too loose, which it seems to be that way. I know uh, it's, the gaps come down just a little bit, but it's kind of maintained that three it second has. gap there. Talk about anything between 2.7 and 3.2. It's, it's roughly staying the same. That's yeah, barely exactly. um, a, a change for the traffic here. As the Porsche number 911 comes through onto the start finish straight, uh, the 912 rather, ahead of the BMW number 25. Now they are together on the timing sheet, put a lap apart, if that makes sense. The 25 car, Alexander Sims, Bill Oberlin got that stuck in the gravel early on, most unbill-like. And uh, caused a yellow, but the car was dragged out and allowed to continue, of course. Cars that we have lost, people always ask this. That won't take long. Uh, no, that's Pat Long. And the 28 Allegra car, drive shaft problem, Pat pulling it off to a place of safety, did not cause a full course yellow, did it? No. Uh, caused us to lose one of our cameras for a while because he parked right in front of it and that camera had to be moved to get him out of harm's way. But other than that, I think everybody else is still running, yeah, aren't yeah. they? Is the yeah. 80 still running even after a couple of offs? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. So that is boards well for the longer race at the end of the season. Yeah, and that battle in the GT Daytona still continues. It's Colin Brown ahead of Jesse Cron, uh Alessandro Belzan and Andy Lally. 54, 96, 80, 63, and 93. I'm, I'm past this information from Lee Driggers. Thank you, Lee, um, for your communication this week, uh, and particularly through the race. But VIR, the top five GTD cars, all went less than 55 minutes on their last stint. Similar sort of circuit in terms of how your fuel usage goes here at VIR for a GTD car, would you think, Owen? Well, I mean, uh, I think it's going to be a lot. Less. You can save fuel here easier than you can in VIR. Yeah, you can really lot of open, wide open run at yeah, VIR. Yeah, yeah, VIR you're just wide open all the time, up through the S's, down the back straightaway. Here you got some of the turns. It's slick, number one, so you can't be on the power as aggressive here. You don't have the grip that you had at VIR, but yeah. you can really roll the speed through the apex here, uh, through the turns. The only turn that you're going to use a lot of fuel here is turn 11, coming back on the front straightaway. That's going to be the one you're going to use the most, and then turn two. Okay. Ranga van der Zander. Going through the Andretti hairpins in that bright blue visit Florida. Ligier with the Gibson engine. Big changes coming for Ligier, for Talara, and for 
Riley Multimatic in terms of the global cars allowed to effectively create a new platform. And that might make things interesting. Also, the update kits have got to be made available to existing con customers at a, a price cap, the way I read the regulations from the FIA and the ACO. I think we might see quite a few cars at the BOP and homologation tests at Daytona in December. I think Shea Adam was there 11 several times in the close season last year for us, and it looks like she'll be ploughing that furrow again. I'm, I'm reliably informed that Shea did 1,500 miles driving the testing sessions during the <laughs> off-season. It's more than most teams did testing during the off-season. I'm feeling that'll be the same. 100 laps completed for Dane Cameron and for Renga van der Zander. As the gap is down, remaining. down to 1.8 seconds. Yeah, John, I was actually watching him go by our position here. Dane just got uh, caught up in GTD traffic, and the 90 car just caught it there out of turn two. So this is going to get close here. It just depends how they catch the traffic here at the end. We'll see him come through. Through goes Tony Garcia in third. Tony V. Lander now seven seconds away, 7.8 seconds away from first and second. Effectively, they're still together, just a second between them. The BMW of John Edwards leads from Dirk Ferner. They've got to be fuel saving if they're going to go to the end. They've got to be doing it. There's no way they're going to make it to the end from here. Neither of them is a Ford. And they, I, um, well, it might not, it actually might not even come down to that because Vlander is taking a couple, or he took three seconds last lap out of Dirk Werner. OK, well, that must be the slower lap for Dirk because the gap's come down to, I mean, 17 seconds. It was a 26.3. He's, he's pulling about a second and a half on him a lap, yeah. It was a 26.3 for Dirk. It was a 23.3, 23.6, rather, for Vlander. 25.9 this time for Werner yeah. and a tw another 23.6 for, for Tony. In seven laps, he pulled in 10 seconds. Wow, OK. Uh, and, by the, and uh, at the same time, he's pulled out uh, uh, 11 seconds over the number three car in the same period. That's yeah. interesting. That's, that gap now 15 seconds back from third to fourth. And that's, Battle that's, Stephen Simpson has closed up on Jordan Taylor. Yep. Now, I, I think that if they're finishing the top five today, that number 10 car, they only have to start Petit to win the championship. Right. I, I think that's the, that's the equation. Right. Now, I, I don't think they're playing for that right now, but it wouldn't be the worst thing, would it, if Stephen put a move on Jordan and Jordan didn't fight that hard, is no. what I'm saying. In championship terms, gentlemen, is what I'm saying. Indeed, John, and furthermore, number 85 car, they want to try and finish second in the points. Right now, they're losing ground to both of the Action Express cars, Good which are ahead of them. So uh, Stephen Simpson will want to get as many points as he possibly can. This is quality stuff, isn't it? Well, this has been a great race here. All, yeah. three, all three classes here coming I, down to the end, 13 minutes to go. I, mean, I won't hear anybody say that this is not proper endurance racing because the way the fuel works, the way the tyres work, the way the driver stint works, I know it's only two, only two hours and 40 minutes, but the decisions have to be made. And we've seen tactics here have to play a part of it. 31, Dan Cameron off the road at turn nine. You do not want to be going off the road there, young man. And that is why the gap is now down to less than a second between first and second place. Just got eased out. got the wrong side of the 73 of York Bergmeister coming around. Even with a downforce car, that's a tough move to make around the outside of a GT. Really tough move. Jerry and I were talking about just our, our race yesterday. I had to run the shallow line coming in there, and that's where the 73 car was. Once you get outside the second lane where he is, you're going to pick up all the tire uh, marbles there, and then the car just got wicked loose on him. You can see on the way in, and he's had to correct it and drive it straight through the gravel there. Yeah, top three now within four seconds. Joao Barbosa not out of this yet either. In fact, he was the fastest of the top three last time around. Jordan Taylor's picked up the pace with Stephen Simpson pushing him along at the moment. And the top two go down into turn 10. There's maybe 15 cars lengths between them. Certainly less than a second as they come through the final left-hander, turn 11 and onto the front straight. If you're watching here trackside, 
the 31 the red and white car is the leader the 90 the blue car is second overall as they go past you now that's the gap with 12 and a half minutes to go quality racing here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca it's no different in GTLM this, except there's three cars here where the gap between first and third is now under seven and a half seconds and the gap between first and second is a second and a half in GT Daytona the top three are separated by three and a half seconds and the top four by four and a half seconds yeah and all of a sudden Colin Brown has uh, got a big lead over Jesse Crow I'm not sure how that happened and where's, where's yeah sorry go, sorry go ahead no no, no that's fine uh, Owen, cheers, all of a just... sudden though it's become a three second gap though. yes Yes, but to the next car back, but he, he hasn't pulled away that much from anybody else. And Balzan's only half a second further back. So yes. that must have been a crone issue, was it? Yes, he was. He, uh, slightly it's slower. A, a, a lap or, it must have been a lap or two ago, I think. I, I didn't notice it at the time. Shea asking me to ask uh, Owen here. The 31 going off on the dirt there. At this stage of the race, with the tyres in the situation they are, how dangerous than that is, is picking up a puncture? Well, big time to get off here in the sand here. That easily could happen. The biggest thing is he got all the marbles that we talked about. He got on that outside line. Then he had to come back on the track, not on the proper line either. So he picked up marbles. So it's going to take a half a lap to a lap for him to come off. And they're going through the GT leaders right now. So this is going to get interesting here as they go through here. Indeed. So, and on that lap after the incident for Dane Cammy, he still turned a 20.1, which is a pretty impressive lap with all that dirt all over his tires. Now, as you say, they're working their way through traffic again. And that was Colin Brown. That's the wheel and engineering car of Dave Cameron just got, got past. So the GT Daytona leader. And here comes the number 90. Me. Oh my goodness, that was close as well. Joao Barbosa and Jordan Taylor having to go almost onto the dirt there. Jordan Taylor under real pressure now. He's pulled away for a moment from Stephen Simpson. Top five will give them the championship once they start at Petit Le Mans. Up at the corkscrew now, right there. Absolutely right there, first and second. Nothing between them, no cars between them, and maybe four or five cars lengths, Jeremy. John, and, and that fifth place was even if number five car won the race. Yes, so, good point. You know, uh, it, 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 they've just got to bring it home, basically, now, and they're going to be golden for the championship. Traffic ahead of the leaders. <laughs> Shea added down to the quick note. The 96 BMW guys have gotten ready. They've gotten up on the wall, and the fuel man was just practicing how to do a very short fill. Ah. Right, okay. Sorry, what was the hilarity for? <laughs> Traffic ahead. Oh, yes, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of that. We've been saying that for the last two hours and 31 minutes, haven't we? Yeah, 16, minute, 16 minutes it was before yeah. they hit traffic, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, uh, things good. that I didn't that's need great, to say. isn't it? No, it's brilliant, though. But it's More been just traffic fantastic. Ahead. It's just been a tremendous measure. Inside now, the final 10 minutes. And all of a sudden, Tony V. Lander is 2.9 seconds from the lead in GTLM. The top three in GTLM under three seconds apart. Apart. The top two for the lead, under a second apart. And in GT Daytona, as Tommy Milner picks the number four Corvette again, he's already on his way back out again. Not a great day for Tommy and Ollie Gavin. Uh, the, the Colin Brown car, 2.8 seconds ahead. But then, within another second and a half, we've got second, third, and fourth in the GT LM category. Leaders in, oh, I tell you what, Dan Cameron, to squeeze past he's Tristan really, Bautier there. He's really pulling out some manoeuvres down to turn 10 again and down towards the final corner. And this, I don't know whether, what do you do if you're Renge van der Zander? What's he got left at this point? He's, well, he's trying. The back end well, of the car just steps out in the final corner. What he doesn't have is a torque of the Cadillac yeah. coming off That's the corner. That's really what he needs at this stage Especially of the game. He doesn't have it. all the traffic that he's exactly. fighting. Exactly. <laughs> the torque means everything. Yeah. 6.2 litre V8 behind the driver's head of the 31 car. Four litre V8, isn't it? Behind the, in the Gibson. For Renge van der Zander, the standard engine for the global cars. Four, is it four litre? Or is it more than that? I, I always get litre. mixed up between the LMP3s and the new LMP2s. Whether one's four and one's five. He's going to get a good four run point, up, right? 4.2 right. Gibson. It's a 4.2 Gibson. Two. Okay, good. Thank you, Shep, for reminding me. I knew one was four point something and the other one was five. 
Well, this is just glorious stuff in yeah. the evening sunshine. What a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. First of all, thank you all for turning out here to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. This is why we love sports car racing, because we are still no closer to finding out who is going to win any of the three classes than we were when the cars rolled out for free practice on Friday morning. And that's the marvellous thing about this. Really is. And that is, that is not a statement that anyone can argue with. I'm not trying to hype this up, there's no need. Down into turn one, the leader held up, couldn't get round the 24 BMW, that's the GT Le Mans class leader at the moment, and that means the Ferrari is in third position just behind the Porsche. Just behind and the Porsche. And Jesse Crone into the pit lane from second in GTT. Balzan goes up a position. She had him. And how close is the fuel going to be? Fuel nozzle is in now. They are cleaning out the radiator. No tires going on. Fuel nozzle still in. Pulled out. Jesse Crone was sent on his way. And she, that means that was he last stopped on lap number 60. The same as Balzan. The same as Lally in third. The same as Blinkerball in fourth. Colin Brown last stop on lap 57. And the BMW has the biggest fuel tank. They have a 100 liter fuel tank coming into the race today. I see the pit board for the 54. The Coronado oh Sport Porsche is moving. They're bringing Colin in. Six minutes to go and the leader in GTD. Now, can surely Balzan can't go from here. The Ferrari is very fuel efficient in both GT3 well. and GTD. Uh, specification problem for the leader. The rear deck is loose on the right-hand side. The rear deck on the 31 car is coming adrift. Oh, there's more drama. You, this is unbelievable. <laughs> the rear catch on the right-hand side of the 31 car, Dan Cameron leading has broken or has come unfastened. How many catches on bodywork have we seen popping this weekend? And by the way, back today, if, if the number 63 car can make it to the finish, there's gonna be a lot of unhappy teams in GT Daytona or any all these other guys if, if they can make it because like I say, the BMW's got six liters less than it had last time out of VAR. He's no, it still as says, tank, has yeah. the, uh, the largest tank in the, in the category. Actually not, the Acura has Blake been Blake in from the Merck in fourth position. He last stopped on lap 60 as well. Oh, this is under five minutes. Can Colin Brown ease this car to the end? The pit, the pit stops are coming very late here at the head of the field. Dean Cameron now with one second and a bit of loose bodywork. Oh my goodness. GT and we've got a three-car battle for third place now. Yes, overall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, overall, great. That's, that's Barbosa in the five, the 10, the, the black Cadillac. Then the 85, Stephen Simpson. Now, Jeremy, I spotted this as it went around the final corner. There's definitely been a breakage on the catch on the back. The whole of the rear deck is loose on the right rear of that car. And it's, there's, there's, there's bodywork missing there. It, oh, no, well, it's a crack to, has developed there where, where they have that, uh, that hole on top, top of the yeah. tire to let the air out in yeah. case the car spins. It's, uh, it's, it's on that, that uh, corner of that that it's broken, isn't it? It's on the right rear there. Yeah. There's been some traffic that he's going yeah. through there. Leader in GTD in the pit lane. Shit, Adam. Fuel nozzle goes in the hood of this car. It takes a little bit longer for the crew member to actually run around and stick it in. The fueling's still going on now. He's good to go. John Bennett said they weren't sure how much fuel they would be shy. It was about two seconds worth. And about two laps. Oh! So, Alessandro Balsan and Christina Nielsen and Lally's dropping way off of him Yes, now. because yeah. Andy Lally is presumably trying to save fuel. He's left it a bit late to cut the pace that dramatically, but uh, he's losing... Uh, yeah, seven seconds the gap between Balzan and Lally. Three minutes to go, and Christina Nielsen has got everything crossed in the pit lane. There's hilarity there. I think they, I think they know he can make it. Meantime, at the front of the, the, the field, Renga van der Zander is right with the leader once again as they head across the start line and down towards the Andretti hairpin. They've got, again, slower cars ahead of them. It's all got to be dealt with by Dave Cameron first. And as the leader, you've got to commit. He does down the inside at turn three. 
We all need to be committed after this. My can goodness me. Can, can John Edwards hold on in GTLM too? I mean, he's got two and a half seconds over Werner, who uh, has got Villander, nothing. Oh, Villander still all over has, him. Yes, yeah, still hasn't managed to find I'm, a way I'm, past. I'm surprised at that, yeah. Jeremy. I thought Villander would have found a way through by now. And the racing, there was clapping there from the racing guy. Shea has the 62 car caught the second. He must have because the whole crew just about exploded. Yeah, I'll see when we can pick them up. He's they're just finishing the lap. Look side by side for the lead into the corkscrew. It's a classic overtaking maneuver, and Renga van der Sande has got through. But it's not all over yet as Dan Cameron tries to come back but can't make it. Down the hill, Renga van der Sande is pulling away, and the pass is made with one minute and 57 seconds to go. Alex Zanardi, are yep. you watching? Yep. <laughs> I was watching a couple laps ago. He was really close yes. to the gap in the corkscrew, and then uh, he caught a little traffic. Uh, Dane did coming out of turn six, and uh, Ringer got a good run and did the Zanardi pass there. Yes, had enough room did. to do it. God, I'm still haven't seen the Ferrari ahead of the 911, but it must have happened. Yes, confirmed. Great run using the inside line. There was a bit of rubbing there. That's exactly the pass that Alex Zanardi made on Brian Herter here in, what was it, 1996 or seven? I was at that yep. corner uh, for IndyCar Radio Network. And, uh, it was a brilliant pass there by Vega van der Zander. Nothing to lose, John. Nothing to lose. Nothing no, to lose here. I, but, but you know what? That that Ruben is racing. I, I no, think, that's great, uh, great this, racing, oh. but I mean, he had to make that move and make it decisive. These guys have not had the best year and they yeah. need this win. Look Actually, it was, a, it was a cleaner pass than Zanardi on yeah, yeah, well, I think yeah. you're probably right. It didn't go as far off either, Jeremy, although there's a little bit more tarmac there. And he's pulled out a second or so. Renga van der Zander and Mark Goosens, the goose. Oh my goodness. 62 confirmed ahead of the 911 in second place, and he's got a lap maybe to have a go. 1.4 seconds between What's those two. What's he got left in the Michelin tyres? Tony Vlander chasing down John Edwards. They're coming. They must have just gone past us. Richard Westbrook, by the way, has dropped away. White flag now for Renga van der Zander. So one more lap, 2.2 miles. And van der Zander has got to keep his nose clean here. It's not all over. There's plenty of places here that you could make a mistake, particularly when passing traffic. Balzan will come to the white flag. And where is he on the track? He's just ahead of the leader. So he's going to have to do this lap and another one in the Ferrari. What a win that's going to be. Oh, my goodness, right the headlines. Wait a minute. Jordan Taylor is up in the third place. Joao Barbosa all of a sudden has lost two positions He's on that last lap. Has he pitted again? No, I don't think so. No, he just but lost he's the just positions. Lost two, no, no, no. There was a he's good... lost two positions. Yeah, you just you said there was a good battle for third. Yeah. Jordan Taylor's gone through. So Stephen Simpson <laughs> up into fourth position as our leader. He's on the last lap. He's last on lap. the last lap. Past where he... Made the pass, Balzan, Alessandro Balzan in the 63, Scuderia Corsa leading the championship. They don't have a win to their name yet. They're 2.2 miles away from it. Meanwhile, at turn 11, ladies and gentlemen, stand up, whoop, holler and clap. Florida has had a lot of trouble recently and the VisitFlorida.com car comes home to win the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship for a... The America's Tyre 250 here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Mark Goosens and Renga van der Zander. Redemption for that team. In GTLM, it's not all over. The last corner, the BMW slides a little bit wide. Here comes the Ferrari, cuts to the right, goes to the left. It's a drag race. We've seen this before. Here comes the Ferrari, but it's not going to make it. <laughs> and the black GTLM BMW wins by 0.152 of a second. Yep. One more lap, and they would not have won that race. He was 2.4 seconds behind him going into the last lap. He made up two seconds on the BMW, but not quite enough to win the race. Fabulous finish. What about GT Daytona? GT Daytona coming down the hill. Balzan is coasting. Balzan is coasting. He's almost kicked it out of gear here. He's going so slowly. Now, where's Andy Lally? But well, he's coasting as he well. He must be coasting as well. <laughs> he's, that he's car nine is seconds back. Near no, full he's, speed. he's nine seconds back. 
This is going to be the slowest lap of Alessandro Balzan's racing career. The hand is out the window. He's pointing at the sky. He's number one. They've got the victory that they've wanted so long. And that is such a big step towards the championship for Scuderia Corsa. Let's go down to Shea Adam. Visit Florida. Oh, the Florida girl gets to do the interview. Shea. Mark Goosens, I thought this interview was going to come a long time ago. Your first win of the year comes here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Sega. You and Ranger fought so hard for that. How good does this feel? Well, it's awesome for the team. Um, you know, the way we've been fighting all year and to finally show up on that podium. I mean, it's awesome. I think we found the new Zanardi here. Uh, you know, what a move. And, um, you know, that's, that's what it takes to win. And he just did it. Great, great job. And especially for your sponsor as well, Visit Florida. It's been a rough couple of weeks as a Floridian speaking with all the hurricanes coming through, especially for them. It's got to mean a lot as well. Well, I think the whole team deserved this win. And, uh, you know, we've been struggling last year. Um, you know, I joined the team at the end of 16 or at the end of 15. Sorry. Uh, we had a hard time in 16. Now we, you know, we made the wrong choices in the beginning of this year. And, um, you know, to keep pushing as a group, as a whole family, as, as, you know, a great team, it's, you know, I think it's deserved for all of them, you know, especially with what everybody went through in the last couple of weeks in Florida. Um, you know, this, this win couldn't come at a better time. Congratulations, Mark. Oh, that is a great, great story. Van der Zander with one of the passes of the season there, with everything on the line. Dan Cameron drew beautifully, take nothing away from the wheel and engineering Cadillac team. And Jordan Taylor coming through in third position, gets on the podium, and that all but secures them the championship. Yep, absolutely. All they've got to do is show up now at the final race. They've got a 30-point a lead uh, now, Does do the Taylor brothers. Uh, actually, 29 points, because up in the second place uh, is uh, Dane Cameron and Eric Current as a result of the fact that Joe Barbosa lost those two positions in the closing stages. Yeah, fantastic run. Uh, let's go down to BMW. John Edwards and Martin Tomczyk win in the black number 24 BMW. Well, Martin, we knew that black was a good color for the 24 BMW. We didn't know it was going to be this good. How much fuel did John have in the tank, do you think, at the end of that one? Uh, not that much, I guess, but he did an amazing job. I mean, he drove one hour 15 um, and he really saved fuel as hell and could keep the pace. So he did really everything what he had in account and that was enough uh, actually three meters enough uh, so it was a really a thrill but i'm really happy and proud about him first victory for me in, in the states so let's celebrate enjoy it tonight thank you we will just noticed that renee rast's name is still on the visit florida car uh, renee not driving with the team i'm led to believe he won't be with them at petit le mans this week, the, the next round either, but certainly a part of that team and part of the development of that uh, car, uh, especially on the leisure side of things. What a fantastic race. And in GT Daytona, the championship leaders take a huge step towards retaining their championship that they won last year with their first win of the season. And what a win it was. Brilliant drive by Christina Nilsson early on and a phenomenal run. Clearly, Richard Westbrook lent Alessandro Balzan the pink fluffy bunny slippers because he stroked that car home from fourth position after the last stops and just let everyone else to get through to the end and to take that victory. Colin Brown having to pit late and Give it up for Porsche. Uh, York Bergmeister, by the way, comes through uh, with Patrick Lindsay on the podium for the 73 car. Andy Lally gets the 93 Akari shares with Catherine Legg on the podium again as well in second place. Uh, should mention that uh, Dirk Werner got the GTLM third position for the Porsche 911 squad. Have a look at some more. Yeah, and where do you want to start? Uh, GTLM. Yep. Uh, I reckon this will this will tie up the championship now for Jan Magnussen and Antonio Garcia. All they will need fourth to do. Fourth position for them today. Yeah. All they will need to do a really good fourth position for them today, yes. considering where they were in for the most of the weekend. They've now got a a 19 point edge over Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe. Will vault from 
fourth to second in points by one over Joey Hand and Dirk Mueller, the teammates. And Bill Oblin and Alexander Sims will fall to fourth place, one point behind them as well. So very, very close in GTLM. Uh, and in the Manufacturers Championship, yes. the, the best Chevy finished ahead of the best Ford. Uh, they were fourth and fifth in the Manufacturers points in this event. But uh, that will extend the lead from Chevrolet over Ford by uh, two more points. And that'll be a four-point lead going into the championship finale. Right, and where okay. does that put... Wait a minute. Where does that put 307? Yeah, add those up because I, I think that brings BMW back into it. It does. Space. It does. 307 they will have to 306 for Chevrolet and 302 for Ford. Goodness gracious me. So BMW go back or go to the head yeah. of the championship standings From there. a distant third. Yes. For, I, say they I mean, they, they were 16. Is that right? Let's have a word with John Edwards while uh, Jeremy checks the arithmetic share. Well, John Edwards, I said earlier in the week, it's a lot more fun to do interview you when things are really great. Last at the end of the first lap, first to cross the finish line, though. That's got to be feeling really good back here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Yeah, after that first lap, you probably thought you were going to have to do one of your usual, uh, you know, sorry to see what happened. But uh, fortunately, we came back. We had a really fast car, was able to catch up to the pack after spinning in the first lap. And um, and then we, we timed the yellow perfect. We saw the, the car in the gravel. Unfortunately, it was our teammates. We would have liked to see somebody else in the gravel. But um, fortunately, it brought out an opportunity for us to just duck in before the yellow. And um, and then uh, it put us on a, a strategy that was pretty stressful for me because I saw the Ferrari coming. And as a driver, it's difficult to, uh, to let the guy go. But you knew they were going to have to make a stop. And we weren't. And it was going to be close at the end. And sure enough, it was. But uh, now before the weekend, my boss, Victor, texted me. Uh, you know, asking if I remembered what happened the last time we had a black car at Laguna Seca, and that was in the Z4, and we won by 20 seconds. So not quite the margin here, but we still came away with a win, and I think my new BMW contract, I'm going to stipulate uh, only driving black cars at Laguna Seca. I think you should. Black's a Raider color, so it's a local <laughs> favorite. Congrats, John. Thanks a lot. Uh, she managed to get it in again. Patience from the drivers was one of our keys to the race, and certainly that was exactly what we were talking, hearing about there. Now the yeah, my apologies for that. It, it's still you Chevrolet to carry over the Ford. One, didn't you? Yeah, I forgot to carry the one. Exactly right. So it's <laughs> three sixteen for Chevrolet, three twelve for Ford, three oh seven for BMW going into the final oh, round. So all to play for is what we're seeing Very between those so. three. But a big, a big switch in GTD manufacturers. I mean, this all pretty much uh, certainly puts. Um, the drivers' championship almost beyond the reach of anybody else for uh, Alessandro Bazan and Christina Nielsen again. But in manufacturers, Mercedes came into here with a one-point lead over Ferrari, but with the win, and uh, only six in the of the manufacturers today for Mercedes. That's a huge swing. 327 now for Ferrari, 318 for Mercedes, 313 for Porsche, and uh, 310 for Acura. Wow, so Acura aren't out of it either in their first season. Very good. They can't win it, but uh, it, they, they can get up to second place. Uh, let's hear from the man of the moment. We spoke to him on his way down to the race as he headed out of Marion's, having had an early lunch. Give you a lift down to the paddock area, Share Alessandro Balzan has taken the win for the 63 Scuderia Corsa team. Yeah, and it was then that I said how nice it was to be driven down by the GTD race winner. He sort of laughed and said, top five would be nice. Well, top of the top five is very very nice. You're quite emotional, Alessandro. How good does this win feel? Uh, I don't know why I'm. Uh, honestly, I'm so emotional right now because it's not my my third win. So, but I want this win really so bad this year. We smell it in Daytona. I smell it at the Mosfor. As we're starting, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna win this year. And and to do this at Laguna Seca, you know, five years after I got the boot with the Scuderia Corsa. It's, it's incredible. Well, and this track, too, has so much provenance for Ferrari. It's the 70th anniversary of Ferrari. You've got that on your fire suit. It's a big deal. And now to go into Petit Le Mans with this, it's got to give you that additional drive to just go out and win that 10 hours even more. Ah, you know, we were so close last year, but uh, I'm, I'm so lucky in life uh, to be able to drive uh, a Ferrari. And uh, to, to do that with this Scuderia Corsa is, uh, is my family. and. Uh, we are going for the win. I, I have so much energy now. 